Okay, guys, let's get started. We are so 14 online. A few of you, a few guys here are also online to increase the the the, sta the statistics. Um, so we are the we're we're gonna start the the Sofa Technical Committee, uh, the number 14. Um, just yeah, the agenda for today and the two other days, so the Thursday and uh, and and uh, and Friday. Uh, they are going to be. Uh, the, 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 uh, there is going to be. So today, it's so the so-called roadmap day. Basically, we are making an update of what has been done regarding the current roadmap up to the SOFA release 2212, and we're going to also make uh, have discussions basically on what people actually aim at doing, so that we uh, plan the next roadmap, which is the the roadmap associated to the to the release 2306. That will be for today discussions. Then Thursday, uh, day two, November 17th, uh, will be technical discussions and a mix with coding sprint. So you can already either on the Sofa Technical Committee webpage uh, or on the so basically on the on the program have a list have the list of the different like coding tasks on GitHub. You can actually find the uh, you can actually find the link directly towards the GitHub issues. Uh, which are labeled for the STC 14, and you can also find a few tasks of uh, of GitHub, which are actually good first issues for for the one among you which are actually getting started with Sofa. It can be a good opportunity to discover like pretty simple tasks or pretty simple development to implementation to do within Sofa, uh, and to, to get started uh, through through the, those so-called good first issues. On the GitHub issues uh, of, um, of our uh, Sofa, Sofa framework uh, GitHub account, uh, and the day three, so Friday, November 18th, will be actually only the morning, and it's uh, it, there will be a discussion focused on BIM models in Sofa. That's some, something that for the moment we intended basically at, to to make like in small committee, maybe to have a room and like a, a physical room and a, maybe a virtual access for some people. If you are interested in this BIM uh, discussion, do not hesitate to, to to let to let us know per email. But this this would be really like focus on really development tasks for BIM models in Sofa. So day one today will be roadmap day. Day two will be technical discussions and coding sprint. And day three, uh, it's actually half a day on BIM models. For today, so this morning, or maybe afternoon for some of you, but uh, so this first half day here of the day one, there will be a few consortium news that you might have already a bit heard yesterday uh, for the SOFA Symposium. There will be then a roundtable, which is like some time per participant. We are telling five minutes, but it can be, it can be more for telling us who you are, what you are doing with SOFA, what you did in the last six months, and what you intend to do in the next six months. And we are going to make also the update of the latest roadmap contributions. Basically, we, we're going to take the V2012 roadmap and review it, see how it progressed, what were the issues, and how it, it's going to lead us actually for the afternoon to then select potential projects, which will continue, or new ones for the roadmap of the V2012. 2306 roadmap. Um, so yeah, always the, yes, this idea of defining the roadmap, we have always to make sure that someone is like the main contact for these tasks and that we are able to define a few concrete objectives, like uh, well-defined objectives, technical objectives for the next six months so that we can really like after after those six months evaluate if it has been done or not. The problem is, I mean, it's no problem at all if there is a, if there is something which has not evolved at all. The purpose of this uh, roadmap is to set, as it's written on, on the right hand side, to set uh, to have a small set of projects and to, on my point of view, that's the these two bullet points. It means avoiding having hectic and disorganized development, like making sure that what we are doing has a meaning and has a purpose. In terms of uh, of uh, development strategy, and the other point is pretty linked. It's to ensure that from the outside and also from the with from the inside, from the community, we 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 are able to define and to present a clear uh, technical objectives, uh, a list of objectives. 
So that will be the purpose of the afternoon, basically, listing those potential projects and then making sure that for all of them there is contact, there is a list of objectives uh, that can be uh, fulfilled. And uh, this will be also, so that will be a, a topic of discussions for this afternoon. Day two and day three, these are actually the links, the STC 14, 14 sprint and STC 14 discussions. I need, I need to, to see if there is already the link that has been set up on the, if it redirects properly, maybe not. Uh, I'll do that maybe at lunch uh, so that you can directly find the, the, the proper uh, sprint task and discussion tasks. Basically, if you just go on like the SOFA week 2022 event, on the SOFA framework here website, you'll find, yeah, if my internet connection agrees with that. Okay, not for the moment. Okay, I'll share that later on then. Um, uh, I'll show you, uh, you, you'll be able to find all the, all the basically possible sprint tasks, as I said, on GitHub issues with the label STC14 or the label Good First issues. And the discussions, uh, technical disc discussions, they are already uh, listed uh, on the on the program for the 14th Technical Committee. So that's for the discussions. That's what I recently updated. If you, if you see any, see anything here which is missing or that you'd like to update, but basically we're going to have some discussions tomorrow morning about like gravity in SOFA. In the meantime, people could actually start coding sprint, good first issues, and coding tasks for the STC 14. Then early in the afternoon, there will be a discussion about SOFA 2.0. So basically what we could, what what uh, what's actually could be made completely new or from scratch for uh, SOFA 2.0. It was a discussion proposed by Insimo guys. Um, then a discussion about uh, collisions in SOFA, the recent developments or what could be done. And I think it could be also a bit related to the topic of beams later on. And GPU developments, which is a, a focus for many of you uh, for making, uh, basically, to accelerate your simulations. What's the status of GPU development in the community? What will be open? What is missing? And so on. And as I said, day three, Friday, 18th November, it will be a, co a mix of coding sprint and discussions uh, on the ongoing developments in Beam Adapter. So a bit about the consortium news, as I said already yesterday, so that's for the financial support that we are getting currently. So it's financial support from INRIA, which is like uh, hosting the project, uh, the, the SOFA project. But not only, we're also having technical members which are financially supporting the development. So it means that with their support, financial support, we can actually have more uh, engineering power in SOFA. So if, as I said yesterday, if your own company or research institute is actually uh, using SOFA, you're satisfied with SOFA for some time, do not hesitate to contact us to see how we could actu actually collaborate like as a member, as a donor, or any other way to actually support, uh, support the project. Um, so that we know, we are also having some fundings coming from training sessions. We already trained, uh, the, the digit should be updated with the Monday uh, information. It's actually up to 42 trainees in 22, uh, 2022, sorry. Uh, so that's more than last year, and it's actually something which is uh, like a constant activity, and I think even a, a, an interest which is growing about these training sessions. We'd like to have more advanced sessions as well for people who knows already so far and that would like uh, who would like actually to to update on some specific technical advanced technical topics. But yeah, that's that's what we what we do also, and that's another way of funding for the project. And there is new new sessions coming actually early December and early 2023. Ongoing operations, we're going to talk about that again, but uh, we have currently two engineers dedicated on developments by INRIA, which are actually Robin here in the room, uh, room sorry, and uh, which is working on coupling SOFA and uh, AI with the deep physics platform. You heard also about the SSD platform associated to deep physics yesterday in the presentation at the symposium. And Alex, who is online, working on the basically first matrix assembly in SOFA, and maybe, I mean, the, the, the purpose is also to modernize the constraint pipeline and constraint res resolution. That would be maybe more for future, future tasks for the next, I would say, year, maybe for, for Alex. Uh, we will uh, we will rediscuss that for sure today. Uh, just so that you know, we, are, we, already, we already said that yesterday, but we are really actively recruiting engineers 
within SOFA, so at the consortium, in the community, in the research teams, and also uh, in the companies like Infintech 3D, uh, with uh, Eric, who is here, but uh, like not only. So if you are interested in engineering position, postdoc position, PhD positions, if you are yourself recruiting, please do not hesitate to let us know. And obviously, you know, as I said yesterday, fundings is one thing and contribution is actually the other big thing for an open source project. It means that contributing documentation, tutorials, bug fixes, plugin, new features within SOFA, using and citing SOFA when you're, when you're using it is really what matters to, to the project. So contribute in your own way. That's exactly what will motivate actually the host of the SOFA project, which, which is INRIA. So to support always more the project means, meaning that it's, uh, they are actually going to dedicate more and more engineers on the project when, when they see more and more contributions to the project, whether it's financial or not, whatever. And this idea is that uh, as soon as you contribute, we want that to be actually self-profitable for yourself. The workflow, technical co committee that we are having today, it's every six months, but if you want to join us on a more regular basis, there is the weekly meetings, the so-called SOFA dev. It's, we are re reviewing contribution, contributions. We are discussing different kind of technical topics that can be brought by anyone, making some updates uh, sometimes about the roadmaps to see what's going on and what are, what are actually the updates. We have also the chat, Gitter, to discuss with anyone about anything, so do not hesitate to join us on Gitter. And finally, the GitHub discussion forum where, again, everything on GitHub, online, you can have support, uh, basic, uh, using development support, but you can also report issues and you can also make your contributions through GitHub. Okay, that's about it for the round table. It was yeah, like 10 minutes round table for introduction. We're gonna slowly start uh, the activity round table to see what you have been up to uh, around so far, what you will be up to in the next six months. And, and we will start in, with this round table with possibly like the non roadmap topics. Uh, we, would, we would then take again the, the really a roadmap for the 2212 topics again right after in the morning after after the break we will uh, we'll start start covering them so i suggest we suggest sorry we can make uh, the round table first online with you guys so if you want to unmute and start i mean presenting your activity of the last 6 months and if you or if you don't if you just started with sofa maybe tell us about your plan development plans with so far that's uh, actually the idea um that's what actu i actually got from that's a very su super condensed summary of what has been actually given by you guys uh given uh, at the at the uh, event registration so that you actually see what people are currently doing that was uh, the last six months developments and a list of globally topics uh, um, is there anyone in the crowd that would like to first start? I see. So uh, we, we can we can start we can start in the uh, maybe with people w which were not really on the roadmap. It could be Camille. It could be uh, we could also start with you, Lingxi. I see uh, uh, Lingxi, Shilundu, and Wang, Wang Yu. If you want to start, unmute yourself and present us what you have what you have been actually up to. Uh, in SOFA and what you would actually like to do later on. Kami, could you start? Uh, could you start? Yeah, thanks. Yes, you... hello, Hugo. I was about to, to say cool. so. Um, thanks. Um, it it be very quick. I actually, I haven't prepared any slides, but um, basically, so I, I, um, I was technically, I think, part of the roadmap regarding the course wrap plugin. Um, uh, for various reasons, I was a lot. Uh, I took a lot of uh, lateness in uh, the development of the plugin. So I'm currently uh, catching up with this, uh, and I'm developing um, basically a coaxial version of the a navi uh, coaxial navigation model for the Cosfora beams, which is based on the interventional radiology controller in the beam adapter plugin, but adapted so to the Cosfora beam model. 
and I should have uh, results on this soon, but um, uh, obviously not for this uh, STC. So um, yeah, it it should it should be more a matter of weeks than a matter of uh, month now. But uh, unfortunately, today I have nothing to relevant to show. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, uh, have you, or have you, or will you? Do you think also work on some like side topics that you, that you already see or that you already have in mind, or like that will be the main focus? I I think that will be the main focus. Like uh, you know, a, a yeah. minor side topic, like you know, updating the whole phys- rendering engine of Sofa or stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would like to. <laughs> Yeah, no, but, uh, um, just joking, but uh, I mean, if you yeah, have any of you, yeah. if you have, if you have also like some 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 kind of side ideas that you know you would like to investigate in the next six months, do not uh, is day to tell us. So. Yeah, 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 sure. Um, I, I think I'll focus mostly mostly on the Corsara plugin. Uh, uh, f- maybe I will. I still have a side uh, project of updating the documentation of Minotaur, but it will be nothing more. Uh, impactful than that. Okay, thanks. Um, I see Olivier in the crowd as, as well. Uh, I, I think I did not see like, uh, or, or maybe I did not, uh, did not uh, write it properly, but uh, from, from your registration, if, if there is like anything you'd like to mention about like the, the previous activity or, the, or really the upcoming activity uh, f- from, from Grenoble now, is there... <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah not. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm not going to work on sofa here, but I'm uh, working through uh, Tongi's uh, uh, PhD, and there will be. Uh, so we are looking to hire a postdoc on the on the Arnia project with uh, Adrien and Stefan, who will be working on. Uh, uh, model order reduction plugin. Okay. Okay. And uh, okay, but basically, but, but as you said, the the the, the main activity, uh, the main I mean, or yeah, the main activity in Grenoble is not related uh, uh, with so far, right? Uh, at least not at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Olivier. Thank um, I see Wang Yu. Wang Yu, uh, you actually you are actually also on the on the slide about uh, GPU compu- computing. Could, would you would you agree like unmuting and and giving us some updates about what you have been up to with so far and what you like to do? I'll I'll suggest like a, I'll make you a request to 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 unmute if you if you if you may. And. If you if you don't maybe I, I see as well Thibaut I don't know if Thibaut you're you're available online or if you can tell us what uh, what I mean what what is your interest with so far what what you what, it, did you already implement anything or would you like to use it or just to give us some update about the the usage of of so far that you have Thibaut come on ah cool. I, for the moment, I can't hear you. I see that you are unmuted, but unfortunately, can't hear you for the moment. You, you might have to like set up the mic you wanna you wanna you, you wanna use. Let, do not hesitate to like let us know when you when you come back. Just unmute yourself and 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 and, and let us know about that. Uh, Shilindu, I don't know if you have some some updates as well. I'm requesting many people here to unmute. All right, link C, same, same here. Okay. Uh, no worries, uh, Shilindu, but uh, do not hesitate to directly write in the chat if you are like, you know, the, the, the last, uh, I would say, last dev activity and the next month dev activity that would be the two things which are actually of of interest for us just to, in order to know what what why actually you are coming to sofa what you do with sofa so that we can also like uh, uh, summarize that a bit to 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 the to the whole community okay so please do not hesitate to 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 share that with us linksy i 
So I saw you like some some kind of your I, I see your your OBS uh, camera changing. Is there anything you'd like to to say here? Yeah. I thought we could hear you. No. Mm. Okay, otherwise, uh, I'm just browsing things here. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I, I see you, Jeremy, as well. But I guess, uh, I guess, Jeremy, you're, you're just like uh, uh, in, a, in a listening mode. If you definitely want to, to add anything here uh, on the, on the like, past, act, past dev activity or next, uh, next six months. But uh, I guess, uh, I guess, uh, I guess there is nothing to be added here. Feel free to, to, to just unmute. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have too much, uh, and I know Francois is also participating yeah. in the meeting, so I'm only listening in. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, Thibaut, could you tell us, yeah, what you would like to, what you would be aiming at? You know, with Sofa in the chat, that would be of uh, just of interest because just to know why basically you're interested in it, what, what you would like to do with it, that would be uh, that would be interesting. Um, so. If if I if I'm like so, uh, taking back the, the the summary of what has been given here in the in the in the different uh, registration forms, so that, uh, I'll take things from 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 the bottom here. GPU computing, where actually Alex was active with a, with an intern and Wang Yu, uh, who is connected here, ri uh, was also raising this topic like as a, as a need for his sofa simulation grasping. We had uh, Ergun Serkan and Xiaoni who, who mentioned that they were actually actively working on this kind of simulation. I would have curious about that. Um, maybe I'll give you the, the mic, uh, Francois, for the Super Helix um, model that you would like to implement if I, if I as we discussed uh, yesterday, and maybe about the, also the, the last month's uh, activity at Insimo. I don't know if there is any, any update to share on that. Um, about like the, I don't know, the collaboration like with France, sorry, just one second. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want to reach out with her like uh, for, for the past month. Uh, it's a bit on hold. Uh, I mean, it hasn't really started. Right now, one of the issues, I think, or why... It's not starting for for us. It's a, it's not really a priority uh, in terms of uh, our product line, like to to uh, basically have a new uh, model for uh, future thread because the one we have actually seems to to do the job uh, for the moment. Or uh, the problems we envision are not really entirely tied to to this particular model. So it would still be interest. I uh, would still be interested to to work with uh, with Florence, but. Uh, uh, it's just uh, um, yeah, lack of resources to, to work on that, basically. And uh, uh, also, like, uh, uh, on the community, like, from uh, people from, um, who are working, like, with, uh, with SOFA, BIM models or COSRA models, they already are developing, like, uh, a new version, I think, of uh, a similar concept at, at, compared to what Florence is doing in Grenoble. So... It's also difficult to find, uh, I would say, traction in the community to uh, to work around this topic as well. Um, essentially, it's uh, working with that model from uh, the team from France Bertels would be, in a way, a substitute to the uh, Cosra plugin uh, uh, model, which is developed uh, by Inria Lille at the moment. So, or it would be uh, a similar, um, have a similar application in my opinion. Okay. Uh, and uh, why would there be a need of uh, like a substitute just to understand technically what is uh, you know what is lacking in Cosra or? I uh, know it's not. Uh, it would be a substitute in the sense that it addresses exactly the same problem. It's just okay. that uh, instead of importing like the model from uh, or try testing the model from uh, uh, the team of Florence in uh, Grenoble, uh -huh. uh, there's been the development of a, a new model which is actually addresses the same issues but has been started from scratch without uh, i would say like uh, uh, testing before what this model could uh, could do okay so, so my so in the end is the 
the community effort is uh, which could be interesting on, on our end is pushed toward the the, the Cosra uh, plugin. But um, I don't know if it's uh, we have not really tried to, to test it like for uh, uh, to model like a, a secure thread. Mm -hmm. uh, and in a sense, I think like the, the target applications are also on, uh, on for the for the Cosra plugin are not. Uh, this type of, uh, of model so it's also difficult like from a, from a distance to see whether or not it could fit um, or it could be of, in, of interest to uh, 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 as opposed to the one that we are using which is based on the Timoshenko beam theory uh, with uh, hard Lagrangian constraints to to basically uh, cancel the, the stretching motion or mm -hmm. so which is the model I presented yesterday yeah yeah, yeah. okay all uh, right. Uh, so, if I go... so, if people are yeah. in the community are interested in in, uh, in working on that, um, I would uh, uh, well be at least interested in participating. But right now, I don't think like I have like a, uh, um, I can bring like the, the development effort um, uh, to to support that actually. Okay. And in a sense, I mean it would. It has, it's also very unclear whether or not it will be uh, if we are leading like this uh, uh, this project of uh, importing uh, SuperHelix in our uh, in our version of uh, of Sofa. It's very unclear, or at least uh, if we are the, we only one uh, working on that to to do that as a as a community uh, effort where we will share essentially like uh, all the results to. Uh, to a, uh, to a community, uh, and when we will have, I've been the, the only one like to essentially like uh, carry the, the development effort uh, to do that. So, all right. Uh, yeah. And anyway, maybe if you can, if you can let, just let us know, you know, whether whether it starts, for instance, you know, at least the connection with uh, with the Florence, so that uh, uh, and with the Elon team, so that we. Uh, just I'll, I'll try to. I'll try to, to reach out to uh, Weaver, like, uh, okay. uh, like uh, uh, I was wondering whether or not she would be around, like, for, for the Sofa Week. Uh, I knew she held a, a conference, like, a couple of weeks ago, uh, so she was also busy with that. So I'll try to, to reach out uh, uh, okay. uh, after, uh, after the Sofa Week. Um, maybe... I've, and if I going back up again, uh, there is the topic of reinforcement learning, uh, starting with you, Leo, maybe. So this was not a, a topic that was like clearly identified uh, six months ago because uh, there, there were actually no like engineering forces working actively on that. That was the there were uh, two PhD uh, students, one ending and one carry on his work on on, on sofa gym uh, leo now you're you're working on that for the next month there should be also another engineers joining this topic very soon uh, i noticed as well powell uh, i don't know if powell is, he, is in the, the, the in, in the audience i did not see him but um, but yeah, that was uh, there, there were basically several people interested in this topic. Leo, could you could you maybe unmute yourself and make a, um, like give us some updates about what you have been doing recently and what you plan actually to do? Yeah. Yes, uh, for sure. Uh, to recap, I discovered the sofa two months ago on the sofa gym project, which is a library to to use uh, sofa sofa scene on simulation in a gym uh, gym library environment uh, for now i've cleaned the the library to uh, to make the use easier um, i make uh, some uh, tests on the benchmark to know uh, the performance of uh, the sofa gym library and in the future, I will try to to make a good uh, documentation for newcomers to to make uh, uh, to make the the use of Sofa Gym easy, and uh, maybe uh, try to improve the performance uh, 
because for now it's not uh, optimal. Okay. So, uh, so if if I, uh, so, it will be mostly, which is uh, like in now less than six months, if I remember properly. Uh, yes. It will. It would be so documentation efforts and um, and working on performance improvements. Improvements here. Uh, I forgot to tell here. I'm I'm, busy, I'm I'm gonna take actually notes all day long and all days long here about what we are doing, what you will be doing, and so on. So I'm actually writing here if you want just to, to have a look at it. Uh, Wang Yu, definitely, yeah, you can speak next. Can you can you tell us more about what you are what you, what you are doing, what you aim at doing with SOFA, what you did and what you will do? Can you hear me? Hi, yeah, perfect. Um, my, my English is not very good. I'm a graduate student from China, mm -hmm. and my work my my current work is uh, using sofa to do some physical body cutting. I want to integrate uh, the work in sofa into Unity. And uh, I'm mainly responsible for FEM and uh, Spring um, algorithm to modify the physical body algorithm i want to use the algorithm modified by myself into unity but uh, i can't uh, achieve th this work um maybe um you can give me some suggestion so uh so so for, from what i remember as well from what you from what you wrote so it's basically basically to have a virtual lever simulation within uh, within unity uh, uh, of sofa for well, using sofa within unity sorry um we, 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 just uh, for information which integration of sofa within unity are you using are you collaborating with like infinitech 3d or um uh, maybe you can speak slowly and ah, sorry I... sorry yeah, oh, uh, how how do you integrate Sofa within Unity? You know, how do you make the the coupling uh, between I, Sofa? And, yeah. uh, from the Sofa website, I see the Sofa for Unity. Uh, it is uh, um, four thousand uh, um, dollars. Uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, it, if if it could works, I can buy it. Um, okay. okay. I want okay. to. I, I I want to know. Um. Uh. Wait. Wait. Wait a minute. Okay. But. Uh, oh. Uh, we can we can pass to the to 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 the next one if you if you need some time, Wang Yu. Um. And yeah, we would definitely yeah, like put you in contact with uh, with I guess in fintech three D for the Sofa Unity integration. Uh, uh, I want to know: Can I in implement my all operation in Sofa for Unity uh, using my using using the Spring and the FEM by myself? So, so yeah, I think for. For that, uh, for that part, uh, uh, we we will, as I said, Wang Yu, we will connect you to the to the team which is developing the uh, developing the integration of Sofa within Unity, and we'll let you. I mean, we'll keep we'll keep in touch to to actually support you doing it. Okay. 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 Thank you. Cool. We'll get back to you per email. Thank you. Thank uh, you. So uh, Powell was not here to talk about Sofa Gym. That would be uh, Leo. Have you uh, have you already heard about Powell? Uh, pa uh, you know, as it is written in the in the slide here, uh, Powell. Prospect, or I'm not sure about the uh, the name. I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay. Because ju ju just to make sure that we, uh, maybe further to the Sofa Week, if you can remind me, uh, just to to make sure that there is the connection between you guys, so so that he. He can uh, can get the direct uh, the direct contact of yours to to use Sofa Gym, okay? Yes, no problem. Cool. Um, 
from what I'm reading here, I see also uh, like I don't know if Maxim is here, Paul, uh, regarding like I, I called it like framework, which touches actually to Python for some of them, to the Sofa Core, and to Sofa Core for both Damien and Paul, regarding like uh, fixes uh, or changes in the API for Damien and uh, Paul, who was uh, who was who was working as uh, presented yesterday on the memory leaks within Sofa. So I don't know if any of them are actually connected here. Moi, je suis là. So okay. I am here. Can you? I am Damien. Yeah. <laughs> Hey Damien, can you can you yeah if you have some like uh, s summary that you could uh, that you could share with us like you know saying saying what you have been uh, what you, what you have been up to in the last uh, oh, in the last six to, months to, uh, uh, as usual I mostly focus on uh, cleaning and uh, uh, bug fixing in Sofa so uh, I had no time to make new features uh, what uh, this includes uh, actually I don't remember I need to go to uh, GitHub. Uh, for that. But I think there were uh, a big work done by, uh, not listed here, by uh, Alex, uh, Fred, Roy, me, and uh, Eric uh, in uh, finalizing all the repackaging of the plugins and modules, which is called the Sofa NG project. We also have been uh, fixing uh, yes, the memory leaks and a uh, bug we have found. We have uh, 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 we spend a lot. Actually, something that is quite interesting, and we made is that we now have a very clear workflow on how we can make the sofa code evolve uh, over time without uh, having, it, uh, having it breaking too much when you are compiling sofa, so you don't notice too much that we are making big change in the sofa core. Uh, because we have a very precise methodology where we deprecate then disable feature uh, with a strong documentation on that. Uh, and I think this is something that uh, uh, we will continue. Uh, yeah, and in general, uh, I, uh, Hugo, I, I don't know if mm -hmm. you have said it, but uh, what we try to do is that uh, uh, Sofa should always compile and work as it was before. And every unattended uh, behavior uh, should be reported because it's probably not desired. And in general, if, if something change, we, we, we put uh, warnings and a message saying that the behavior has changed and uh, ask you to, to update your code. Yep, thanks, Damien. Um, and for uh, regarding the the next six months, do 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 you already like do you, what, what amount of time do you think you you'd be able to like to like, you know to free yourself? I know you you're getting a bit busier those last uh, weeks and 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 last month. So uh, just to do, do you have already like a vision on that or no 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 I have no visibility on my workload uh, for Sofa in the next mm -hmm. uh, six months. So what I uh, I will. Uh, have a very opportunistic uh, way of working in which uh, every time I'll, I see uh, easy fix and easy small change that could be merged, uh, I, I will do them. But uh, I have no uh, long-term visibility. Okay. So m maybe a, a good uh, development opportunity could be uh, as well to to, uh, to make a, a GPU implementation of the constraint solving. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it could be could be nice definitely to have like a tracking, you know, uh, when we are, uh, for, I mean, for maybe for yourself and for like uh, uh, as other people like you when they're when they have opportuni opportunistic like development strategy as you do, just to keep track of what, you know, what's going, what's go what you are doing so that we, we 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 can really see in which direction it goes and so on. I, I, I lost uh, you, Hugo, actually. Uh, at uh, some point. You... So I don't know okay. when, when you stop uh, talking. Oh, yeah. wait, wait. Can, can you still hear me or? Yes, now uh, it's okay. 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 Uh, I was just saying that it would be it would be cool for I mean any uh, opportunistic developer uh, always to keep uh, to keep track of you know what what you are doing and 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 as as you are saying here making some kind of summary so that we we know even when it's actually a bit opportunistic. To give a sense and give like uh, to make sure that it 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 goes always in in a in a direction. So that's uh, thanks for for making the reporting, uh, Damien. And, and yeah, definitely if if you have any time like more visibility on 
on how, how, many, how much time you can actually dedicate to SOFA or, or on which specific task you could actually dedicate time for on SOFA, that would be that would be cool. But yeah, okay, so I wrote like the no, vis no visibility on the SOFA workload in the next six months, in the next. All right. Um, I, I don't. I, I did not see uh, Maxim or Paul right in the in the in the audience. I did not. not Paul, Max, no. All right. Um, yeah, and Gu Yang. I'm not sure. No, he, Gu Yang no, was not was not there because he mentioned like the integration in in his uh, registration. He mentioned the integration of Sofa within. Chai 3D. I was curious about about that, and just to know whether other people were were actually working on that kind of uh, of, of integration. Uh, and I see. So Shilindu, obviously, as with uh, Infintech 3D, there was the topic of being interested in working on the integration of Sofa within Unity. I think you're already in contact with uh, Shilindu, I guess, uh, Eric. Um, from 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 what I saw, I mean, it it, it appears so. Um, uh, could you, since you were like not on the on the roadmap, do you have like uh, some updates, or do you want to make them a bit later on? Uh... Okay. Okay, and with topology, perfect. Uh, all right. Uh, I don't know if Eulali is online. No, no, she isn't. Uh, it would have been nice to have like some some updates on 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 the T Rex project for those. Who do not know the T-Rex project? It's one of the of the big soft robotics projects going around uh, going around so far, and it aims at basically reproducing any kind of soft robot within Sofa, having those robotic digital twins within Sofa. It works for uh, XXL robots, so really huge robots. It, it it's, it's supposed to work with micro robots. It's work which is done uh, in some labs like Femto uh, in France uh, and others. Um, to work in medical robotics and stuff like that. And for those, all those robots, we aim at having like a platform mimicking and proposing a digital twin of those robots within SOFA. So that's basically the, the, the aim of, of TRX. There is another axis, but uh, this could be discussed. Uh, I mean, we, we could have other opportunity later on to discuss about that. It's to couple SOFA with some other platforms and actually libraries like uh, Pinocchio, which is a, a robotic uh, um, uh, for, I mean, it's a, a software library for articulated robots. Um, and having, yeah, um, they're, they're handling a lot like contact uh, and, and constraint problem resolutions. We, we are, I mean, there is in the context of TRX the, this idea of coupling those libraries, SOFA, Pinocchio, and maybe also some computer, vi computer vision library. So that's uh, that's uh, that's that's maybe something to come. Um, I'll get closer with uh, maybe Vlad. Uh, could you like make some updates? Yeah, you can, can definitely join us if you if you want to. Um, As you want. Yeah, uh, do, I, I do, I do, do you have some? Anyway, so there will be feedback. I Sorry, uh, you you can sit here. I mean, yeah. It, it... Uh, well, frankly speaking, there's not much to share uh, since yesterday. Not much has changed. So I've been working on a um, plugin for um, interactive cutting in, in Sofa. That's, I would say, like 70% done. I need to clean up the code. And the most important, I need to work on the doc documentation because since I'm the only one that's uh, using this plugin for now, it's easy for me to know my way around but for anyone who gets into the project it's actually i guess quite confusing so yeah that's uh that will be my main direction of work for the next uh six years uh years months so, <laughs> so that's uh quite a long run <laughs> compared to the what, what you gave us uh, as uh, as input you know in the um, in the in, uh, in the registration it was up to 40 50 percent ready so i updated it up to 70 as a, as a, as you yeah, said yeah i would say 70 60 70 True. shit <laughs> um is that uh, you jamie who is uh, saying something or Bonjour. yeah i think uh, jamie is uh... okay okay i just muted muted him okay thanks uh, francois 
Uh, all right, uh, I'm taking back the notes here. Okay, so that will be we're continuing on document. I mean, even if it does not look like a, like a huge day dev, dev contributions and so on, I think it's like key if you, as you said, if you want to have the, the the code and the plugin actually uh, actually used, it, uh, it's going to be. Uh, yeah, I guess so the most important and the first step to go is to make it work with the um, uh, default build of Sofa. Mm. Because I have some some changes in the in the code of, of Sofa that I need to merge. With which version of Sofa is that? Uh, it's twenty one point twelve. Okay. Yeah. The latest Sofa release for now. Okay. Thanks a lot, uh, Vladimir. Yeah. Thanks. And as as Vladimir said, you know, if you want to have more information about the 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 cutting cutting plugin. So first, it was it was mentioned yesterday during the symposium. I can provide the link again for. Yeah, you can use it. And there, so a cutting plugin. There we are. There we are. I'm sorry. What? Uh, it's in the slides that you that you gave me, or. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I see. So. Yeah. So there was uh, a, a note of Wang Yu here. And Christian, don't hesitate to contact yeah, for for any any question on on TRX, You can definitely contact uh, uh, Christian Durier, who is the, the the head of the of the Defrost team and involved in the TRX uh, in the. T-Rex management uh, in the T-Rex project management. Sorry, um, I know no problem, no problem, Jeremy. Uh, and thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, yeah, yeah I, I just shared also the GitLab uh, repository for for sofa cutting. Uh, if we get back to the list, then we will start to come to again cutting simulation also within fintech 3D. Um, that was one of the topic you, you you rose in the in the registration. I'll check if I'm not forgetting anyone. So just uh, some some news about the US, which are it's a bit too early for the moment for the US to to, to like to, to wake up. Uh, there were York Peters who was actually updating all their work on. Um, they they have a project called Tips, uh, uh, which is like uh, using Sofa simulation. It's actually I think. Uh, uh, not abdominal, but ga g uh, gastro, gastro gastroscopy simulation, if I remember pro properly, uh, using Sofa, and they are actually updating their code, which was coupled with a 1912 version of Sofa. They are updating that to the 2022 20, version of Sofa. Um, we had Nicolas Corbin as well that was mentioning some interest, uh, and that would be worth maybe for you, Christian, if you can hear us. Uh, uh, he had some interest uh, and available availability to work on on uh, nonlinear uh, ODEs in robotics. Uh, he was he was interesting in in like uh, using uh, using Sofa for for uh, robotic simulation and implementing po possibly uh, new models in Sofa. So that I think uh, for robotics, so I think it would be a very very interesting to 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 get uh, to get uh, Nicolas closer to the to the soft robotics community. Um, Lorenzo, I don't know if you, Lorenzo is in the in the no in the in the audience here, uh, who mentioned some interest as well for coupling. So there is ongoing development of Sofa Unity integration. I think so. Is Lorenzo should be in Italy? I, I don't remember exactly the uh, the lab, uh, and they are working on intracranial. In intracranial aneurysm clipping so i guess it's in collaboration collaboration with you eric uh, within fintech 3d and their plan for the next six months is actually to work on this neurovascular structures simulation of neurosurgery um with so far model model modeling actually the blood vessels as well so it's uh, a topic which is uh, which is rising valentina will will talk about the the catheter models later on so uh, uh, along with professor Choi, i guess we will we'll talk with a uh, uh, with them on on Friday. I don't know if Davide is around here. Davide, no. I saw him earlier, 
connected, so we'll see if he get if if he's getting back. I will da -da -da -dum. Fine. I'm browsing all the the people who mentioned. Yeah, so I, I I mentioned already the grasping aspect that people are actually working on grasping scenes in Sofa, but uh, both uh, Giao and and Ergun are, are actually not connected. So we're we're gonna wait for that. Shall we then? If this uh, if the I mean the roundtable, we could we could actually. If anyone else wants to take the mic for the roundtable, do not hesitate to do so. Otherwise, I would suggest we will move to the to the like a roadmap updates and also like for people who prepared few few slides to to present them right now. What time is it? It's actually ten. We could make a small like, like a small break since it's supposed to be like making the break be between the the non roadmap update dates. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll have like a, maybe we can make a fifteen a fif uh, yeah fifteen minutes break. So that we will restart in 15 minutes. It, it will give us give us the opportunity to to update our coffee level, and uh, we'll get get back to that. Um, so in the in the roadmap here, sorry here, in the roadmap topics, there will be here just so that you know uh, a bit of uh, Sofa Next Gen mentioned already by uh, by Damien. So basically the updates of Sofa so that uh, all the core baking really uh, becomes like modularized documentation of the Sofa NG. And so on, there will be matrix assembly, Sofa AI, uh, a word about model order reduction, a word about the uh, Sofa uh, GI project. Uh, Arno, I see, I see you're here. So uh, uh, right after maybe the, the break, we could actually have an update on Sofa and Phoenix, on Sonics, maybe a bit more technical than, uh, than yesterday, but I think there are going to be things uh, that uh, said again compared to what you you presented uh, you presented yesterday. As we, we could actually go through the different bullet points that we listed uh, last uh, uh, last summer, basically, and a word about beams and Cosra plugin uh, with uh, with you guys. Okay, so let's uh, let's restart around ten fifteen. Okay. If there is any question, please do not hesitate to use the chat as I'm repeating for several days now. Okay. Thanks, Anu. Uh, I just added some uh, some notes uh, on the on the documents to to little bit. Uh, um, cool. Thanks, Francois. I'll, I'll take uh, emphasize on on what I was uh, we were talking about like yesterday and uh, mm -hmm. and summarize that. I also completed a bit the the notes uh, you took on uh, what I said, giving a bit more details on what I did and what I'm going to do. Thanks, thanks a lot, Camille you, uh, and François. You're making my uh, my job easier. Thanks. And anyone can obviously uh, complete the notes, you know, concerning your own work and so on. If it's unclear or what, or if there is some few things missing in what I wrote, please do not hesitate to update.
time is over. So it's uh, yeah almost yeah ten fifteen. We will we have a few new in, yeah um, incomers like Gabriela, who go who, who got in and Powell as well. Uh, Powell, I added you actually on one of the slides before there. Uh, and uh, you were actually on, on the Sofa Gym. Uh, I mentioned that uh, to, to Leo, who is an active developer uh, developer of Sofa Gym. Could you do you have some some updates about what you what you are what you maybe are already doing with uh, with the Sofa Gym or what you would like actually to do? Powell, yeah, there. I just sent a request for unmuting if you can hear me. And Gabriela as well, if you have some updates about what you are aiming at with SOFA what you would actually like to do uh, in the next six months or what you already did in the last six months. Who, yeah, do not hesitate to unmute your, yourself and just uh, give us some updates. It would be nice. If none of you guys is taking the mic, otherwise we'll continue. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, really, anyone just uh, never hesitate to, to unmute and take. I mean, the, the, the technical committee is also the opportunity for everyone to talk about what you are doing on, on the development side, so do not uh, hesitate. So we will start this uh, roadmap uh, analysis, so the, just to, to make a feedback about the V22 212 roadmap. Uh, there were actually seven topics uh, from so, uh, SOFA NG, uh, matrix assembly, SOFA NAI, model order, order reduction, uh, the new SOFA GI, uh, the SOFA and Phoenix, BIM and Costra plugins. I think we could start, so as we said earlier, with maybe SOFA and Phoenix, uh, Arnaud. Uh, I'll keep the, I'll keep the, the just this, pa this page here open. You can, if you want to share some slides, do not hesitate, or if you want just to react to, I mean, to, to just give us some updates about the, the task that you, that you had as an objective uh, the, the last uh, six months and just, yeah, what has been done, what, how did it work and so on. Yes, um, uh, maybe I think I can share the slides that I sent you. Yep. Do we see something? You, yeah. There we are, yeah. Yeah, so it's basically a, a bit of a copy-paste of what has been said yesterday, but I can elaborate a bit more. Uh, so for those who don't know, so I worked on the Sonics plugin uh, along with uh, Cidati at uh, Strasbourg, and uh, we were aiming at uh, interfacing Sofa and Phoenix together. So Sofa will not elaborate more about it, but uh, Phoenix is basically also a finite element software uh, which is heavily used uh, at Luxembourg. And uh, like I explained yesterday, uh, displays some really nice features such as uh, automatic differentiation and also already a code basis of uh, finite elements that we can use actually in SOFA. Uh, so what has been done since the last test uh, STC? So unfortunately and fortunately, I had to defend my thesis. So it took a bit of time. <laughs> Didn't have much time to... Uh, to, uh, to contribute a lot in, uh, in the plugin. But uh, we submitted a paper together with the Strasbourg team, Mimesis, and uh, it's uh, still under review. So what is good is that at least I had to fix the version, but uh, unfortunately I'm still a bit uh, scared and afraid of touching things until the paper is really published and accepted because I don't want to break anything or <laughs> sometimes it's still a bit touchy to, <laughs> to move something when you're publishing the paper. <laughs> And also that's why we are not uh, up to date, uh, let's say, with the main version of the of SOFA. Uh, a cool experience is that uh, I also presented this work at the Phoenix conference, which was in uh, August in San Diego. And uh, we got awarded the, the best PhD presentation uh, because so one of the reasons is that I also took the haptic device with me and uh, showed the, the powerfulness of uh, SOFA to the Phoenix community. So they were really glad that uh, their work could be plugged with uh, other open source project. I think I was the only one displaying such a, let's say, good combination of software. So they really enjoyed uh, the real time aspects and uh, all the good things we can do in, uh, in SOFA. Uh, congrats. Huh? 
Yeah, thanks. But I mean, unfortunately, to make them come into SOFA will be really tricky because they are doing really complicated finite element stuff. Like every time it's uh, really multi physics combined with like fluid structure interaction plus magnetic uh, field. So, I mean, I'm not uh, hopeless. I think we can do it, but uh, every time it's not aiming at uh, real time simulation. Every time it's a HPC cluster for two to five days sometimes. So, Mm -hmm. It's really a different objective, I think. Okay. Uh, so like I said, a few bullet points from the paper is that uh, we could have reached uh, machine down precision uh, equivalence. Uh, so using our Sonix uh, plugin versus Sofa Caribou. So we obtain exactly the same solution for linear tetrahedron and uh, hexahedron, and also quadratic uh, tetrahedron and hexahedron. So we validate it with Savannah Kirchhoff and Neo Hukian that were already implemented in uh, Sofa Caribou. Then after we also verified our solution with FEBio. So here also we obtain a good agreement with Savannah Kirchhoff, Neo Hook, and also Mune Rivlin, but we still had some issues with the linear hexahedron. I have no idea why, but we obtain a really large error, but we also run the simulation using AceGen, which is a, another software. And our solution was at least closer to Ace Gen. So I don't have any good conclusion. I don't want to say FEBio is wrong. I don't want to say we are right. But the conclusion is that Ace Gen and Sonix converge toward the same solution and not FEBio. So we might need more software to discriminate this. I will see what the reviewers have to say about this. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, the final application I showed yesterday, so it was this uh, OZAP felog then anisotropic model, which is quite, uh, I wouldn't say impossible, but difficult to derivate to obtain this tangent stiffness. So we make it work with the Sonix plugin in a real complex setting with the liver surgery simulation with a haptic device. And uh, yeah, the material model has been validated in Phoenix uh, using the manufactured function. And uh, now we can also handle the boundary condition directly in the plugin. So we're, it's still a bit of work with CDAT because we have some problem with some facets that are not the same in Phoenix and in SOFA, but it's uh, something we are working on. Uh, so the roadmap. Uh, that we are aiming to is to merge our branch in the Caribou uh, master branch because for the moment it's just a feature of the Caribou plugin, but we really hope to make it, uh, yeah, to make it in the master branch. Uh, some documentation is heavily needed because even if for me it's quite straightforward to add a new, uh, to add a new material, I understand it's not straightforward for everyone. So I think uh, with Christian a good YouTube demo or a small video explaining on how to implement your own material could be a nice uh, add in the, in the plugin. Uh, so like I said uh, yesterday, still a few manipulation of C++. I can show you what are those small ads. <laughs> can you see the code actually? Yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, it's so a bit, basically it's, when... It's a bit small. If you can zoom in just a, a, a little bit, would be would be perfect. Can you, can you see it? Uh -huh. I think it has zoomed in. Uh, so basically what we need to copy paste every time is that if you add a new material, so you need to copy paste uh, the constants that you want. So for example, it could be, uh, so for Mune Rivlin, C01, C10 and the uh, bulk modulus. But for Ogden, like you see, it's nine, uh, it's nine parameters. And uh, yeah, for uh, Simon on Kirchhoff and Neo Hook, for example, it's just two parameters. So Young modulus and Poisson ratio. I'm sure we can do something better every time, <laughs> but uh, for the moment, you still need to declare those constant uh, in the code. And uh, the other add you need to do is uh, just to declare the pointers that are pointing toward the integral for every material. So basically we do it for, so what we call F is the residual vector, uh, the boundary condition that uh, I'm still handling here. Uh, J, J stands for the yeah the stiffness matrix, and uh, P stands for the strain energy. So it's still really few copy paste, but uh, I wouldn't say it's a trouble, but it's something that we might and can improve. I'm, I'm sure of that. 
Uh, yeah, one thing also was to directly give the path uh, to into SOFA in the Python and then to trigger on the flight compila compilation. So it's uh, something that might be a bit trickier. Uh, I've seen, I mean, it's just that in the Python, you have to check uh, if, uh, if the code has already built. If it's not built, you have to build it. So it's a bit on the flight compilation. So like I said, in Phoenix, they are using some uh, number, some number to do this. Uh, yeah, I think it will require an engineer on full time for at least six months to solve this. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, like I said, the usual CI CD test to ensure the stability with the Phoenix and SOFA current master branch. And uh, we would be glad to have some uh, first users on this plugin to have some feedback. And uh, we would like, uh, as a next step on the roadmap, to implement other physics based equations, such as a heat conduction problem or something that is not related to mechanics all the time. And finally, out of the roadmap, so for me, I will soon uh, finish my time in Luxembourg. Uh, my postdoc is uh, ending in January. After that, I will move to Australia. Still no real plan for Australia, <laughs> but uh, I hope to still be able to have some time to contribute uh, into the SOFA framework. And also, I uh, would be glad to have actually a collaboration there to continue working on the SOFA in uh, whatever settings could be uh, industrial research could be teaching but uh, i would be glad to continue using it and uh, one internship that will soon start uh, in luxembourg is to implement uh, iso geometric analysis so iga for those who don't know it would actually be able to use a cad model directly into sofa so it requires to implement some uh, nerves and splines that are usually done i mean usually used in cad uh, cad software to define uh, the different surface and this will be implemented also in the Caribou uh, project. Uh, we already created a repo for this. And uh, yeah, that will be the objective on the upcoming six months. And uh, yeah, uh, for the Caribou plugin, um, doing this uh, with Sedati at Mimesis. So he might be more the person to talk to, but I know his PhD is not directly linked to Sonix 2. So <laughs> we don't really know what to do on the next steps uh, for having Sonix. Uh, giving it more visibility let's say so that's uh, that's all for me you have a there is a question i think from francois yeah it's uh it's a really exciting work uh, i think but uh, i have uh, one question it's just um uh, it's about like um, the issue you raised about the fact that you you need to to recompile code um as far as i understand like you uh, you already have generated like a uh, header files and C code for quite a lot of materials, right? It's just if you want to add a new material model that you that you need to do uh, to go through that process again. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, every time, I mean, I can show you quickly what we, we can still see. Uh, we can still see the screen. Yeah, yeah that's uh... so basically when you go in the mat. I'm not in Phoenix. When we go into the material, so you have your Phoenix code generation. So, for right. example, for Savannah Kirchhoff in a tetrahedron. So, it, that's the Phoenix part where you define uh, so the strain energy density function. Okay. Then you use the command line uh, FFCX that will directly generate uh, associated C code and header file. Okay, all right. And in this header file, you can actually uh, catch. Uh, I mean, catch. You already have some uh, pointers that you can access to. So, if yeah, you right, name so your I mean, material correctly, yeah. yeah, it's it seems like already like uh, working pretty well. Like in the sense, like uh, it's only if you want to push a new material model that you that you need to go to. Oh yeah, to yeah, yeah but in my so. mind, yeah, I had this idea that uh, I mean, not everyone will use uh, the classical material that I implemented even though I can still implement uh, dozens of them already. Mm. I mean, in the biomechanical field, every day someone is coming with a new material model to, to simulate any kind of tissues. So yeah, in my mind, I was hoping that uh, everyone could easily add his own material if he needs or she needs. All right, yeah, but it uh, uh, looks nice, I mean, <laughs> already. That's... Okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. But it was just like a, a further step if uh, one day someone wants to implement his own material that uh, yeah. at least I will do this uh, short video for showing uh, to the people how to do this 
and then we can see maybe they can contact or let an issue and for us uh, like i said it's just a really few modification you just have to be able to write down this uh, strain energy density function and here you just precise uh, the element type you want and for me if you ask me a new material and give me the strain energy function it's uh, less than five minutes to do it in the plugin yeah it seems so it seems like it okay cool that was my uh, initially when you presented it yesterday i was wondering whether or not it was like a something which uh, was very specific to uh, uh, tied actually to, um, uh, to a specific simulation and you had to run it again uh, every mm -hmm. time like you, you change simulation but it's really the material low so it's, uh, it's yeah i mean once you compile your new material you don't need to do anything more okay cool thanks for uh, the question Thanks, uh, François. And uh, to, to, yeah, to carry on on that, uh, I know there were some remarks from Stéphane who, uh, who, was, who mentioned that it could be also cool to use, for instance, uh, this, I mean, this kind of easier way to design uh, a, material, a material law to maybe up, go to, um, I mean, push things towards even automatically or, uh, and by automatically could be several, I mean, we could, uh, we could think about several kind of methods, but uh, you know, to, to find, way, find ways to, from something that you would actually observe. Uh, and I guess there is, a whole, uh, there is a whole community that may work on that in the mechanical community, but based on things that you would actually observe in a video or whatever, uh, in some experiments, you could actually the updates, try to optimize some materials, but material load that you could, could actually optimize uh, like make some kind of new material law or at least you know optimize the material law so that uh, i don't know if it's a polynomial one or whatever so that you you actually fit at best what you are observing here in a, in some experiment um, i don't know if you if you know some guys doing that also in the phoenix community like you know mat material law definition or whether it's based on on existing laws or or yeah no, I mean, I didn't see anything in Phoenix. Uh, what I did also, in, I mean, in SOFA, one, uh, one part of the thesis also, uh, I was working on uh, breast cancer. And uh, what I was doing is that I had a material model, so it could be a linear elasticity, for example, and based on uh, some scans of the patients, so just the outer surface, I was able to optimize the material parameter inside to find the best fit. But uh, this is what, I mean, this was only been done uh, just in so far no no coupling with phoenix okay okay cool but yeah n definitely nice to 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 see that but possibly here with the merge within caribou with the documentation and so on we might still 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 hear about you even if you if you are like a few kilometers away more more kilometers away the to to us than right now in in luxembourg but yeah definitely uh, let, let us uh, let i mean let us know i will we'll keep track of what what you're doing and uh, do not hesitate yeah. to update us um, in the next months sure cool and um i see there is also a remark of damien do not hesitate to unmute yourself damien to say that just uh, because i i see that there is a there are several things that have been written. Um... Yeah, actually, I have a, a question currently, if I understand correctly. The, when you implement a new material, this is not part of your uh, scene. It's, uh, it's, it's something that has to be done separately from your scene. Right? Yeah, it has to be done uh, previously uh, okay. before and, I mean, and then you simulating the, your material. Then you do the compilation step. And, mm. and after that, you have a... a a plugin that contained the new material uh, from generated out of Phoenix. Uh, exactly. So my question is that um, actually I am pretty sure it's possible to uh, uh, to let the material to be defined in the scene and have all that uh, dynamic recompilation done at load time. So basically you load the scene and you see there is a new material and at that uh, specific instant of time, you, the, the, the code generation happens. Uh, mm -hmm. So my question is that, uh, do you think it would be a, work, a lot of work? Or is that what you say when you were saying it would take six months? And that's what I was saying about uh, the six months. Because okay. so I'm working uh, with uh, Jack Hale also at the University of Luxembourg, which is one of developer of uh, Phoenix. And he told me uh, this step. I mean, that he's using, uh, at least he told me to use Zemba for this. 
but he told me it's not that straightforward. And I mean, my C++ is decent, but I wouldn't say it's excellent, but maybe a, a good C++ user, which is already acquainted with uh, Namba, might be do this in one month. But uh, for me, <laughs> for me, it would take at least six months, I think. Okay. But uh, I fully, I, I think it would be really, really, it's already super great, but uh, letting the end user without recompiling anything, uh, selecting its material would be just, or uh, constructing its material would be just great. Mm, yeah, that was really the aim. Like uh, if he can, first we would like to just, uh, for him to give the path to the C file generated. And then, I mean, the, the real good step would be to just write down your energy function, maybe in a header or in a decorator, and then to compile everything. But uh, I mean, that's a bit of work that we don't usually have the time to carry on during the PhD. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, anyway, thank you a lot for the work. Thank you. Thank you, Damien. Um, I'm sorry, I missed, uh, I think I missed uh, Remy, right? Is that, uh, I, uh, as I wrote in the chat, it's uh, you're, you're the RB, is that correct? Yes, sir. Ah, cool. Um, so I guess in the last like six months, uh, activity is, uh, I, I don't know if you have many things here, but it would be a rather on your plans, right, for the next six months? Yeah, definitely. And then it's just because I started a job uh, with some guy, a mechanician guy uh, at uh, Cal State University in LA and uh, a surgeon in Lille that maybe some of you know, who is called uh, Mathias Brieux. And it's a project about uh, props, genital props. And definitely the, the last uh, presentation about uh, Sonix will be really interesting for us as this uh, mattress bri brio will be very excited in having uh, more and more precise uh, mechanical uh, models and uh, flexible way to to implement new materials and everything so definitely I will be in contact with uh, either Anno or I get uh, Sidati is also in the in the pipeline so yes, that will be definitely that. And for, for him, it will be really to understand more and more how we could play with Caribou and then Sonix uh, to, to have a very uh, uh, validated uh, mechanical uh, behavior and so far. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. If I also if I understood uh, one, one, I mean, heavy demand. One demand, at least from the mechanical point of view, also was to be able to output some tensors, such as the Cauchy stress, for example, even Pura Kirchhoff. I don't know what they want. But what is good in this uh, Sonix plugin is that uh, every tensor that you compile, you can actually output them also in the in Caribou after you just need to take care of the visualization. But basically, data, we can have the... Sorry? As a data, you mean? Or... Yeah, you other data do... we can okay, we cool. can uh, calculate them and compute them. We can compute them at the Gauss nodes or also on the on the nodes directly of the mesh. And okay. after it's just some visualization that has to be done. Yeah, that, that that's exactly I, I, that's really something which is I think uh, Remy, uh, you you would confirm that that's really what, what something which is expected uh, to to get. Uh, uh, that would be obvious. I mean, uh, like for all mechanical analysis, uh, you, that's the typical the typical typical values that you need, like displacement field, uh, stre uh, stress tensor, strain tensor. Uh, th that's basically the that's basically it. Those three informations would be would be definitely key for for them. So, I think also to go towards uh, what Remy is saying and uh, the interest of uh, of the Digin uh, startup uh, that he's working with, it's that these kind of really mechanical oriented codes and, and, and plugins would really like be a super plus for uh, the whole mechanical community, which is still not super present actually around SOFA. And I'm sure having that, especially having that through the coupling of SOFA, Caribou and Phoenix could be really awesome. So if it's something that comes directly, you know, with the, with the generation of, the, of your C++ uh, codes, um, then Arno, I, I would be even more like interested in having, as, as you were proposing, like a YouTube demo for a simple material. I would, I would love uh, first watching it and then try to do it myself. So yeah, 
That would be great. I promise to do it before January. I still have two months to do this. <laughs> cool. Um, is there? Uh, I, I I see some applause, but I, I did not get the name on the on the interface. But um, uh, Remy, is there anything you'd like to add, or things that you you, you would you you would be sorry interested in or uh, active on in terms of developments? Not really. Really, I think yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens, but definitely Caribou and Sonics will be my main topics. Uh, okay, cool. Next and I, and I, I, I would uh, then therefore, uh, maybe, uh, that's where Arnaud, so you, saw, you saw this kind of demand, it's actually on Gitter. So I, I, would, I would say on this topic, uh, Caribou, Phoenix, uh, so Caribou, Sonics, uh, uh, and, and all the coupling of, of all that and the usage on the, on the US side would be really cool to like keep this uh, Gitter uh, chat, you know, very active. I mean, there is a, 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 a guitar which is open, and let's keep uh, keep that for you know the everyday discussions, and and let's uh, let's plan a, a few a few meetings maybe later on as soon as uh, there is uh, real questions and so on. That would be cool. Thanks a lot, uh, Remy. Anyway, if there is anything else, uh, even later on, do not hesitate to to, to interrupt. Uh, you unmute and you you interrupt us uh, any any time you like. Thanks a lot, Arnaud, for the for the update. Um, we can, where is my, where is my slide there? Okay, I'm gonna share again, there. There we are. Um, maybe a word uh, from Olivier, do you have a, yeah, there you are, Olivier. Just, uh, I'll, I'll speak for you, but you can unmute and let me know if, if, I'm, if I'm missing anything here. But basically on the model order reduction, there were so a few plans to, to you know, updates example, prepare upcoming deprecation of mechanical matrix mapper. I don't know if it was done. Organization of uh, of the plugin itself uh, and and update the documentation. I guess this was some kind of pause because there were no active engineers on that for the moment. But it's exactly the topic you mentioned before with the postdoc that will will be recruited on that. So it should actually evolve in the next six months. Is that correct? Hello. Uh, yes, yeah, more or less. But I think uh, in the postdoc there will be some uh, maybe a few new theoretical <laughs> developments as well. Okay, okay, um, okay. And uh, is there? I mean, it's an open position, right? You, you did not already. The the recruitment is not over, right? It's yeah, uh, no, no. We still uh, we still looking for. Uh... Okay. <laughs> For, 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 are you looking for people in Australia? I don't remember. <laughs> no, okay, cool. Um, so let's see if we do. You think do you, yeah regarding this roadmap topic? Would you like to keep it like at the roadmap saying, like meaning it's something that really should pretty surely evolve in the next six months, or how do you see that? Or or do you think the next six months will rather be recruiting and uh, the updates and changes would be rather be later on in in twenty twenty three? What do you think? Uh, I suspect it would be more uh, a bit later on. Okay, okay. So, so yeah, from what I got, it's, uh, you, 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 uh, you said it's, it should be a bit later on. Is that what I understood? Yeah? Okay. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks a lot, Olivier. So I'll write that down here. Um, um, maybe, maybe a word as well about the, you know, uh, maybe Alex, did you prepare something for uh, the sofa uh, and the work on GLFW or, or, you know, within your presentation on, on matrix or on, or, or not yet, uh, or not at all in. Um, <clears throat> hello. Uh, so good, good morning. Really. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, I did not plan to talk about that because uh, I did not uh, make any progress on, uh, on this. Um, so yeah, so it's not planned to, to talk about it in the matrix assembly. What I can say is that uh, um, it's still in a development uh, stage. So uh, it's, it's usable, but uh, I noticed that uh, some users some new new users uh, can have some trouble to uh, to compile it and build uh, and build it. So uh, maybe this could be the focus for the next uh, step uh, instead of um, like adding new features. Okay. Uh, okay. 
Is is that something you 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 think you'll you'll have like your 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 you you would be willing to to take time for to to work on that? Is that what what you mean? Mm, I'm not so sure. <laughs> uh, I don't think I will have the time to to focus okay. on that. Um, so on my hand, uh, I I use it almost every day. So I'm I'm quite happy with uh, with uh, what I have. Uh, so it, it really it's usable, but uh, not uh, not finished, not polished, uh, uh, if you want. Uh, so uh, yeah. Okay. 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 I'm just uh, I'm just taking uh, taking the notes in the in the same time. Up. All right. Uh, so I, I I think really the 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 idea of the roadmap is is that like if like there is no huge will or or time really de which is sure to be de de dedicated to the topic, it's maybe preferable not to like make it appear. Let's keep it maybe in a like in in a active mode definitely, but more as a side project if it's fine if it's fine for you. If there is some requests from from users. To make it easy to use and so on, we would definitely do it and so on. But uh, like not overloading you with this uh, with this topic for for the for the next six months. What do yeah, you think? yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, if I see some bugs or improvement easy to fix, uh, uh, it, it should do it. Um, but I don't think uh, we will have a new new features uh, uh, developed uh, for the next uh, six, six months. Yeah, uh, I started to use it a lot because uh, I could see there is a huge difference of uh, speed, uh, rendering speed between uh, yes. AM, enfin, JLFW actually, and uh, Qt. The only thing I miss, and I will, uh, I mean, I'm planning to do it, but uh, to add a feature is like uh, to have uh, the position of the camera uh, fixed, uh, like, you know, the dot view file, like for the Qt and QGL viewer. I didn't see anything about that in the IMGUI uh, mm -hmm. uh, GUI. <laughs> so like to save a view, you know, like every time you repeat a scene, you want a special view, you want to save view and yeah. restore the view. So yeah. Yeah, I'm planning to, to do that, yeah. Um, may I ask Fred uh, whether, so does it mean that you will really like uh, use it for, for the, I mean, you're using it now on an everyday basis, like Alex or? Not, not everybody, uh, not everyday basis, but once I need a, a rendering speed, when I do my benchmark and stuff, I'm using it because I know QT is like doing some bullshit behind, bullshit behind. even if I don't know which, what kind of bullshit, but I, I'm sure there is something wrong in the QT uh, viewer. So for now it's like, I'm. Uh, Juggling, juggling, like swapping between the two UIs. But I guess in a few months, I guess I will be tired and I'll just keep uh, IMGY. Uh, but it will be a bit related on what I'm speaking about the end of uh, Sofa NG. Okay. Is how to, uh, mm, how to manage the GUI itself. I yeah. will see later. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um... Uh, yeah, so, so yeah, sorry, I was uh, taking just uh, uh, some additional notes here. Um, looking at, so okay, we covered GI model or reduction. I think yeah, we can uh, we can start. I don't know who wants to start first on the on the on the presentation for on the other presentation for the for the roadmap. Yeah, yeah, uh, Alex. Well, up there we are. Uh, Alex, do you want me to share your presentation, or do you want to share your own screen? Uh, uh, I can share mine. Uh, I okay, have cool. added uh, two okay. things. Perfect. Go. Go ahead. I'll prepare the notes as well. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I have a, uh, a slide uh, to speak about uh, the things that I've done uh, out of the roadmap, so it's not about metric assembly. Um, 
so you've seen yesterday that uh, Stefan Despierre's um, uh, won the uh, award for uh, the plugin uh, with uh, GPU linear solver. Um, so it's uh, it's now available on GitHub. Uh, you can start using it. Um, and uh, he also worked on a multi-threaded matrix operation for uh, for constraints. So it's not uh, merged uh, yet. So I need to to dedicate some work to finish uh, the, the pull request. But uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's almost over. Uh, it needs uh, a bit of love <laughs> to finish it. Um, uh, we did some minor uh, improvement uh, of the performances. Um, so uh, basically uh, reducing the calls of uh, the get value, um, optimizing rendering function, or uh, for example, um, optimizing the three by three matrix product. Um, the other things are uh, that uh, all the defrost uh, plugins are no longer depending on the sofa ng uh, compatibility layer um, i think <laughs> uh, so we, we have a lot of plugins <laughs> um, and uh, i also cleaned uh, the examples provided in uh, in sofa so all the uh, required plugins are normally up to date, and um, all the aliases are removed. And uh, currently, I started to improve and clean the uh, the code related to uh, the thread pool. Um, so there are some ongoing uh, pull requests. Um, so now I will talk about uh, the metric assembly. Uh, and the things I've done. So uh, I did not plan to explain from the from scratch what I've done uh, because I've uh, already explained it uh, uh, at the previous uh, STC. But uh, just as a reminder, the goal was to uh, to refactor how uh, matrices are assembled uh, in SOFA. So first of all, uh, I've uh, written a, a long documentation. Um, I tried to export uh, it as a PDF uh, this morning. It's uh, almost uh, 15 pages. So uh, yeah, you should uh, you should uh, understand uh, what I've done from the documentation. Um, so you, you said it's a, so you have a 15 pages uh, documentation available for the matrix assembly work. Is that is that yes? Is that a... Okay. Yes. So it will be shared uh, when the, uh, the the branch will be ready to be merged. Uh, um, yeah, because the um, there will be some changes uh, in the C plus uh, code, but also for the for the scene uh, users. So, uh, so that's why the documentation could be useful. Um, so yeah, the API will change. So uh, what I did is a compatibility layer uh, so that uh, you don't have to, um, to update necessarily your code, but you are invited to do it. <laughs> so, um, so it means that uh, if you have a component that is not updated yet, uh, if you use it, it will continue to work with no guarantee, uh, of course, but uh, it's supposed to work. And uh, you will have a runtime message uh, warning you that uh, you need to update uh, your code. Uh, and since there is a compatibility layer, uh, I don't guarantee neither the uh, the performances. Index uh, checking. So the one issue that uh, uh, we have uh, in the current um, 
code, uh, the current implementation, is that uh, force fields and masses were allowed to add contribution anywhere in the matrix. So even outside, if you if you if you if you give a a wrong uh, uh, row and column uh, index index. So there was no uh, check. So I I did uh, basically a check that uh, the uh, the row and the column uh, indices uh, matches the sub matrix of the com component. So basically, is the force field allowed to uh, to write to add contribution inside uh, this sub matrix or not? So if you if you are outside, you will have for now just a, a message because it's actually a, a debug feature. Uh, it's not uh, made for the end for the for release uh, uh, build. Um, so um, yeah, you will be warned. Uh, I think uh, with the current implementation that uh, we can go even further and uh, check the indices against uh, the, the topology. So, so, yeah, but it's not uh, done yet. Uh, regarding the performances, if I check the indices, um, it does not take more time uh, to check uh, to check the indices, I think it's because of branch uh, prediction, which is uh, really efficient. But uh, if you want, you can uh, uh, enable or disable it uh, at runtime. So it's uh, just a, a data that you can uh, set uh, in the scene. I've added uh, unit tests, so not uh, not much to say, but uh, it was not done before. Uh, so so there are now uh, unit tests for the new uh, for the new systems. Uh, I've added uh, support for a damping matrix. It was not done uh, uh, yet, and uh, that's it. Uh, so what I'm planning to do is to. Uh, to to prepare the branch for uh, to be merged uh, soon, I plan to make some more tests and more cleaning, but uh, that's it. And uh, for the future work, um, I think it could be possible to add uh, some uh, multi-threading features, uh, so to accelerate uh, the matrix assembly. Um, and it could be easier with, um, with I, I mean, I've um, refactored the matrix assembly to, to have that in mind. So it should be uh, easy, or easier to, uh, to add a multi threading support. Uh, so the, so the, uh, the API will change. I did not propagate the new API to all the SOFA components uh, yet. But as I said, there is a compatibility layer, so it's not uh, uh, so. So the, the, it's supposed to work, uh, and uh, I still need to figure out how to deal with interaction force fields uh, because they are not yet uh, supported, or at least without uh, uh, an associated mapping. That's it. Thanks. Okay. Cool. Th <laughs> yeah, there is there is applause here. Um, <laughs> is there? Uh, yeah, do, do you have plan? Do you already do you already have plans uh, for interaction force fields? Like you know, a, a strategy to come come over uh, this. Uh, like it's basically the last complex point uh, for for mm -hmm. matrix assembly. Uh, how do you see things? So, uh, um, so in the past uh, months uh, or year, I did not see. Uh, how to have a simple implementation. Uh, so I think I will go with a complex one. <laughs> um, so basically, I will 
I, I think, uh, I'm not sure, sure right now, but the, the way I see it is uh, continue to continue to to have an implementation where you get like four different uh, sub matrices and uh, and uh, fill it by hand. Uh, so um, I'm not so sure. I, I need to try it, uh, but uh, I need to try something because it's not uh, supported. Yet, uh, and you will uh, be updated. <laughs> and, and and there there is the, the so basically the the interactions like uh, you know mouse interactions with uh, that that are creating this kind of uh, interactions, right? Interaction force fields. Yeah, is there many... this, is, this is not really an issue because uh, if you if you add a mapping. Uh, you can consider that the interaction force field is simply a force field. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you can transform the the scene or the the set of components so that uh, so that uh, the interaction force field is just a force field acting on a single mechanical object, and this is supported. So um, so this is not really a problem. Uh, uh, but uh, it's uh, more for the general case where the the user have de has defined an uh, interaction force field uh, somewhere in the scene, and uh, and it's not supported. Actually, it's it's supported, uh, just explicitly supported, not implicitly. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, my, my my question was uh, is. Is there many other cases than you know uh, mouse interactions that uh, that you you see as complex interaction force field cases? Uh, the most, uh, yeah. I think the, the 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 main use case is to add springs uh, between uh, objects. Okay, so possibly also penalty methods or stuff like that, right? Uh, yes, but uh, penalty methods uh, were not supported uh, before, so it should not change anything. I mean, I if mean, you yeah. have uh, if you have a mapping, uh, if if yeah. your if your force field is under a mapping, it was not supported. You mean implicit the implicit contributions of yes, yeah, okay, yes. okay, okay. But it means if if there is like uh, okay, this could. Become supported if you if 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 a uh, yeah if a solution comes uh, come I mean if you come up with a solution for interaction force fields it means we could uh, we could uh, it could it would be then supported which would be a new feature yes. right yes yeah. yes okay cool and one last question is uh, what about the you know we we were saying uh, last uh, technical committee that uh, we would inter integrate the the your old branch in the v2212 is that <laughs> still uh the plan or how would you and it's maybe an open question to to all uh how would you see that uh, uh first first alex maybe uh, the integration in in sofa master uh, for uh, 2212 i think i could uh, merge it uh, i mean uh, make it ready to be merged uh for uh, I, I would say december but uh, it has to be decided uh, together if uh, it will be uh, merged in the release or not. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's up to discussion. Yeah, yeah. As as Freddy is saying, is basically we have to make the decision whether it comes right before or right after the release. Uh, that's, yes. Uh, so that's uh, that would be the question. Uh, okay. Well, so we'll we we we'll, we'll maybe and I guess pretty shortly, but we we'll discuss that uh, uh, discuss that uh, uh, earlier this uh, early this afternoon. Is there any question? Maybe because I did not check that since uh, since some time here. No, there is no rising hand. And is there? A, yeah. Uh, to me, matrix assembly is a feature I really want to see merged. So, so you would you you would say to this question, what would you say actually, uh, Damien? No, no, Damien. Okay, uh, and Francois. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, 
François, François, do you want to un uh, unmute yourself, or or it was it's just to say like uh, I suspect there is, uh, and I don't have any example of it, and I don't know if it's so. I think it's not uh, a priority uh, by any means, but just to mention that I think that you have the same uh, a similar case uh, as the one you want to tackle with the uh, interaction force fields, where you have four matrices that you that needs to be assembled somewhere in the system. And that would exist with a, a multi-mapping, a non-linear multi-mapping. If you handle the geometric stiffness of uh, that multi-mapping, you would, it would have like uh, uh, also like two input mechanical objects. You would, um, in some cases, and I don't have any example of it, you would also have like to somewhat uh, handle like four matrices as, as well in that case. But mm. uh, I think it's uh, yeah, it's, it's it shouldn't be treated as a Uh, as a priority at all it's just to say that if you mm. if you somewhat find a way to solve like your interaction force field problem it will also apply to this sort of uh, yeah okay so right now uh, i um, so i support uh, geometric stiffness of uh, of mappings uh, of yeah. non-linear mappings but uh, i so i check if the the mapping deals with uh, one or more mechanical object, and I don't support uh, more than one, uh, you're right. So I, I, I need to also, yes, to, to, to think it's, about it. It's just like, I don't have like really examples of it, but would, uh, sure. uh, this would happen uh, where you would have like, uh, it would be both nonlinear in the two inputs and, mm -hmm. the, and the, um, the, the partial derivative would be uh, coupled. Uh, so it would, uh, uh, the mapping would, uh, Would have a couple cross terms, so uh, I don't know if that's uh, possible to <laughs> to have that. But just to say that if you uh, if you tackle the problem you have with the interaction force field, in uh, without uh, resorting to uh, to saying like okay, it's, in fact it's a, it's a mapping and uh, and uh, it, it would also like solve this problem. But then again, I don't think it's a priority. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you, François. <laughs> Cool. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot, Alex. Uh, I'm looking at the list of the the various topics here. Um, I don't know if Younes is uh, is here. Camille, do you know if Younes is in the crowd uh, here? No. I don't know. I haven't is seen it? him so far. No, uh, no, I, and I'm not doesn't... in the lab, so I don't know. Okay, and and do, do, would you able? I mean, do you have some 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 updates regarding uh, you know the 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 work on Kosra and and uh, because there were uh, like a pretty dense uh, pretty dense presentation last uh, at the last STC from from UNES about what he was aiming at uh, at doing in the last uh, in the last six months. If we if we just for instance here, if I share this. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the roadmap at the same time. Okay, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I wanted to share there. Uh, share okay. application so far roadmap there. So on uh, on the beam on the beam Cosra plugin beam uh, beam so beam adapter and Cosra plugin. It was a tutorial for Cosra uh, implementation unit test uh, API for nonlinear mappings. A piecewise linear strain that was uh, one of the topics he, he presented and insti insisted mostly on. Um, yeah, real time dynamic Cosra model. Uh, so that was, I guess, for the yeah, implementation of the mass um, the mass contribution in in a, in a Cosra model, uh, and and all the I would say test verification validation of uh, of the Cosra Cosra model. Uh, this this is maybe maybe more uh, like like your part for the for this last point. But do you have any any updates uh, on on those different points or? Yeah, so unfortunately, I won't be able to give precise information. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I know that uh, UNES has been working on the piecewise in our strain for some time now, and I'm pretty confident he implemented UNES tests like the second point. So I think this uh, exists, and there are things to be said on that. Probably as well on uh, the third point, generalize the API for nonlinear mappings, but uh, with caution. And about uh, handling the real-time dynamic Cosra model, uh, I'm, I don't know. I couldn't say. 
Um, the tutorial for Cosmo plugin, I'm not sure. So yeah, once again, Younes has more information than I do, but I know that he has been uh, cleaning the the prefabs in the Cosmo plugin. So even even if there is no uh, formalized tutorial yet, I think uh, he worked to clean things uh, up to make that as easy as possible. Um, yeah, and basically that's all I can say, but obviously I don't have any detail. Um, I, I think he would have things to say on the unit tests, unit tests for the modules and the implementation of the piecewise in strain. So I hope he'll be joining during the day and comment on that. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you said, yeah, the so the four, the last point I don't remember, but the two before uh, the Python controller for moving coaxial instruments and the verification validation for the plastic Cosmo model, these are definitely mine. And as I, I said earlier, I've done a uh, few progresses at the moment on that. Even though it like for for the last let's say a month and a half, it has been progressing much uh, faster. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. So, and would you, would you see, would you see those, like those bullet points to be pursued like uh, for, for the next six months? Do you, do you think you, both you and Younes will like be active in the, in the next month or, you know, yeah, up to, uh, up, up yeah, to June? I, I want to come. Uh, um, I see that Christian is saying in the chat that the model reduction is implemented. Uh, for linear or polynomial strain. Um, so yeah, so that I think that that's for the fifth point uh, and as well for the second. Uh, uh, wait a sec, for, for the... Uh, the implementation of the piecewise linear strain. And so it's, uh, there is piecewise linear and there is a polynomial as well. Okay. So I guess the PNLS of the second point. This wise nonlinear string, I expect. And yeah, Christian said that the big next step is the nonlinear stiffness of the mapping. So uh, the third point, I guess. Okay, next steps. I'm sorry, quoi? François, OK, yeah. Uh, quoi? Non, c'était le corner case or? Ah, no, uh, François, sorry, no, François. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 question. yeah and um, I realized like uh, I, I sent like the, my previous uh, message only to you, uh, but it's uh, <laughs> and, uh, as opposed to sending it to, to the whole chat, uh, as I thought I was doing. Anyways, uh, it was just a question because I'm not sure I, I understand. It's uh, maybe obvious for you, but it's not for me. What uh, does model order reduction would meet for for COSFA? Because I presume it's already a pretty reduced model. Uh, and uh, uh, I don't understand actually what you uh, what what you meant by uh, use the COSFA build model with a model order reduction for COSFA. Yeah, to be honest, me neither. <laughs> Um, right. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, th I think that's a that's a bullet point that Younes added. Uh, so yeah, I, I uh, maybe Christian knows about this, but I'm I'm not sure if he says that the next step is uh, the nonlinear stiffness for mappings. Uh, maybe maybe this one was like uh, far fetched. Uh... All right. Never mind. It was uh, just uh, when when you mentioned that, I was just curious about what it could mean. I, I would be interesting also to hear <laughs> Younes on this, but uh, yeah, I, I won't be able to give more information. No problem. Uh, oh, okay. Christian says you reduce the number of unknown strains by considering that it has a polynomial. Um, you mean Christian like uh, something which is not piecewise? Okay. Can, can you hear me? I, I... Yeah. yeah. We can hear you. Uh, we could hear you. To open my microphone, I will... I'm on the yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. You cannot hear me. Yes, yes, we can. Ah, okay. So uh, the, the idea of reduction is that so the the basic Cosra model for each beam 
you, the unknown is a, a strain. So, so the, the strain tensor. And uh, if you want, you, you can have less uh, unknown if you consider that along the fiber, you, you have a polynomial behavior of the strain. So now the, the unknown are the parameter of your polynomial. So you reduce a lot the number of unknown. All right. Okay. I think I, I somewhat understand. I have no real knowledge about like uh, uh, how complex like the, the strain law can be like for for this sort of model. But okay, I sort of get a, a sense of what you what it's about. Thank you. So it's it's not a piecewise model then. Oh, cl it's close to music. Eh? So, ah, sorry, so, so, well, we so are losing you. Uh, here the, uh, so usually, yeah, the train is going too fast. Sorry about that. Um, you can you, do not say to either retry the mic afterwards question or write uh, to to write in the chat. Uh, um so yeah but but i i um I'm, yeah just just to comment on the last two points you were asking uh initially if i would uh, uh, pursue ah, yeah. go, go ahead christian uh, okay. sound is sound is too bad huh? Can you... uh, okay, I, I let, uh... Ah, it's back. You're back. You're back, Christian. Uh, maybe this afternoon. Ah, nope. Okay. Yeah, and so yeah, um, okay. the like the coaxial uh, navigational model and the verification of the plasticity model is what I'm working now. So we we can put them in the next roadmap. Uh, can can you say that again? Sorry, uh, I did not. Uh, I was not writing. Sorry. Okay, can you say that again, Camille? Yeah, no problem. The the last two bullet points uh, that yep. were on the previous roadmap. Well, I mean, not the last two, but uh, the implementation of the Python controller for moving coaxial instruments and the verification and validation for the plastic coaxial model. These are work I'm currently uh, doing. Working. So yeah. you, you can put them on the next roadmap. <sighs> oh, sorry. So, all right, continuing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry, maybe just one remark, but uh, otherwise it's just so we can talk about it later. It's, uh... Yeah, go, go ahead, Fonda. Uh, no, it was just like, uh, I was curious also about like the fact that you're implementing like uh, material laws like for um, uh, for beams and I, I presume or like for the, the Kosha theory. And uh, I was wondering or curious why, uh, if there is some relationship possible with uh, uh, what was done uh, with uh, uh, Jean Nicolas and uh, or uh, the Phoenix uh, plugin, like for material laws. But I presume it's, uh, it's complex or too difficult to implement, or it has not been implemented in Caribou, like the, uh, the same way to uh, represent. Uh, uh, I would say like beam models in, in that plugin because, yeah. it's a bit, it, because I, I believe it's also kind of different compared to uh, like uh, having like a triangle or quad or tetra or exa support geometry and having some interpolation function that doesn't work exactly the same way I, I presume yeah uh, it's actually a talk we had a few months ago with uh, Sidati and uh, Jean-Nicolas uh, because they were considering at some point to add the beam elements in the Caribou plugin. And uh, yeah. I think that the main uh, issue in the development was that the um, for the beam elements, you like the Timoshenko model, which is in so far, you're using um, uh, rigid degrees of freedom. So with six degrees of freedom at each extremity of the beam. And um, from what I remember, th the implementation of such degrees of freedom in Caribou at the time represented a uh, uh, cumbersome uh, development task because for the moment, uh, 
the the plugin has been mainly developed with uh, vec3 degrees of freedom whether they are uh, for triangles or for uh, uh, three-dimensional elements so from what i remember that was the issue at the time but it was not like a hard-coded issue it was just that it would represent too much development so i don't know if there were some development on that on their side uh, and if so yeah it would be it would be much more straightforward to implement the, the type of laws like because initially i developed plasticity in the bmfm models uh, in sofa and the translation would be quite straightforward in caribou if uh, such elements were supported but then it's a bit different with the cosra model yeah i presume it would also like uh, coming back to what was presented before the uh, it would require as well like, to have like a somewhat like the similar beam or models as well like in a uh, in phoenix i guess if you want to have like the same kind of uh, expressive way to uh, to describe your, your material laws and I, I don't know if it's uh, that's the case uh, anyway so that was just a just uh, just to comment on that so i know we had some work on uh, shell elements that has been implemented but as far as I know, I've never seen some beam implementation, but I know it's possible to make your own custom elements. So I think it would be possible on the Phoenix side. But uh, like Camille said, maybe we need to see uh, yeah, how we can store those data uh, and read those data into uh, Caribou. Yeah. So I guess it makes sense that, uh, from, that there are two separate things because it's uh, currently because uh, right now the, there's no easy way to uh, uh, merge everything or to and maybe it's not desirable it was just uh somewhat something i was i was curious about thanks for, for yeah, yeah thanks uh, thanks francois it's a, actually it's a question that is coming more and more uh, and recently like for stent modeling or this kind of complex structure structure which are well modeled using beams but which sometimes require different kind of material law uh, we've already got actually several times the question uh, for oh what kind of uh, material law are available for beams, uh, like whether they are Timoshenko or Kosra. For I mean, we you, you all I mean, you all know that like the beam adapter. So it's uh, the, this uh, Timoshenko approach implements only the linear elastic uh, uh, elasticity here. But definitely having more advanced model for for the Kosra model could be could be really uh, could be really awesome. That's another topic that uh, that's a topic that also. Has been raised by the the guys uh, who presented yesterday, you know, from University of John, uh, Johns Hopkins, who were some, yeah, possibly interested in modeling their needle not only with a with a class uh, like with a linear elasticity, but uh, something possibly more complex. So, yeah, if 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 there is a, a way, I mean, at least if we could continue discussions on on that, I don't know exactly what it would mean in terms of as you as you said, Francois, like integration or merging of things like between caribou and and Kosra, i think it's it would be like uh, it's, I, I, i'm not as you said i'm not even sure it's really something that uh, is uh, desirable but but yeah so it could be definitely uh, thought about make uh, having more materials uh, uh, available in Kosra. thanks a lot uh, if you wanna, if you want, again, I, I'm just copy pasting again the, the the link in the in the chat, because if you wanna add things, uh, for instance, I don't know Arnaud or, or or Camille, if you wanna add things or, on what just has been asked uh, by Francois, you know, for material law here on 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 uh, on, on the Cosra Cosra plugin, that's uh, you can definitely edit uh, edit the document. Um, okay. I'm actually updating it here. All right. Um, we will. So we'll have maybe the time for one last, uh, li like w one last presentation, and we'll do. I think there is three left. There is correct. Uh, I think there is Robin, uh, Fred, and Eric uh, who still could present. Is that fine if we start with you, since like it was not really. I mean, it was not on the roadmap. Is that uh, okay? You can present from from there if you'd like, or or there. Sorry, uh, yeah, with the mic, yeah, yeah, cool, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> Can you see? Yep. Yes. Yeah, perfect. So, yeah, I will go very quickly on my last contri contribution. So, as I said yesterday, it's mainly de driven by uh, the project I'm working on. <clears throat> so, one, uh, I mean, just a quick uh, word about topology. Um, so, I've been working with Paul uh, Schegel from uh, the kit and also following several issues on GitHub's. Uh, there's some pull requests uh, on the topology, so mainly uh, to fix uh, some uh, special case of initialization, like uh, starting from a mesh with only point cloud, or uh, also, um, <clears throat> so the, yeah, I won't go into all the details, but yeah, there were several problems, like uh, starting from a point cloud, starting with an empty mesh, um, starting with, uh, so empty mesh and topological uh, mapping, so it was uh, many cases that was not handled uh, right now in uh, in SOFA, or before in SOFA. Uh, there was, in the second point, can you see my mouse? Yes. There was also um, some problem with uh, the topology handler, so when you are creating topology data from node that you create during the simulation and then you remove it, so the basic case was uh, Using the mouse interaction, using the um, um, picking the picking a, a tissue, for example, and then deleting some points, uh, there was some problem. Uh, okay, just uh, and yeah, I've been also working on the bilateral interaction constraint, so now it's supporting um, a topological uh, operation. I mean, topo removing topological elements. Okay, and. Sorry, and so um, next point I will I will speak more about the beam adapter because since uh, now three or four months I'm working uh, in collaboration with uh, LN Robotics on uh, sort of on catheter navigation. So starting digging inside beam adapter and cleaning the I mean did some cleaning. So first I would say um, big thing is. Uh, uh, I want to uh, introduce a new uh, component in, uh, in the BB adapter, which we'll call, uh, for the moment I call it wire section material, but maybe the name is not a good one. The idea is to be able, uh, like I, I show in, uh, in the scene here, to create different type of, uh, I mean, different parts of your uh, wire section or catheter section, and you define all the parameters in here, and then you can use it inside a list of wire section material inside your wire strip. So the idea is to be able to define as many sections as you want with uh, the different parameters. Uh, so yeah, um, for the code color, uh, blue are pull requests that have already been merged, and red are pending uh, pull requests. Um, which means, therefore, that uh, possibly the scenes in beam adapter, so I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm like extending warnings also to guys in Lille and so on, since in, in, in beam adapter will have to be updated, the examples will be updated and so on, but you can really take a look at the new structure of, uh, of scenes, uh, of uh, beam adapter scenes. Okay, thank you. Yes, that's, uh, that's why it's pending. It's, we are waiting for, for feedback and maybe uh, also some point maybe we didn't thought about and we need to update it. Uh, the second uh, things, it's more uh, breaking, um, adding a new controller which is called beam action controller because I saw in, in different uh, components in beam adapter we are using keyboards to, to manipulate the, um, the, the catheter and the idea here was to move all the user interaction inside one component which uh, will uh, rule them all. Uh, the idea is uh, you have a write mode where you can so use the keyboard it will dump a list of uh, action and you can reload it. Uh, and so it's easy to, with this, it's easy to, to create some tests and to replay some uh, simulation. Um, then this is more, it's not, it's more pull request uh, linked to the optimization of the code. So normally we added a lot of uh, re non regression tests and uh, unit tests, so it's not breaking the scene that are already inside the um, 
be metadata repository, but it might break something. I mean, maybe it breaks something in uh, code I don't have access to. So you can have a look at it. So the, there is still one pending. Uh, yeah, this is just a really quick movie to show that uh, now uh, a demo. A demo, yeah. We are able to, but it's nothing really new. But uh, um, while trying to do a simple scenario of having one guide uh, wire, guide wire and then one guide catheter going uh, out, there was a lot of crashes and unexpected behaviors. And why right now we are able to deploy two two different tools. Uh, from a very long uh, pathway, and there is uh, no crash, and still some good uh, performances. So last thing is just, uh, I did a lot of tests. It's OK. Uh, this was not really new. It was, I already presented uh, in last STC, but just to remind you that there is also a lot of work going on on SofaCuda, uh, on refreshing the plugin. Uh, I won't go, I, I put it here, but I won't go, I won't describe it. Here it's some uh, benchmarks also done uh, on SofaCuda. And that's all. And for, yeah, for the future works, uh, I will continue working on the topology and geometry uh, depending on the issue that are raised in GitHub. Uh, the idea, uh, what as I said last yesterday, I'm going to release the Apply Robotics uh, plugin as soon as we agree with, uh, with the features with, um, with Apply. Uh, there's a lot of work on to do on the Turing uh, plugin that I released uh, uh, recently, and I'm going to continue working on Beam Adapter. But yes. I, I will. I will. Uh, I will repeat your question. Uh, yeah. oh, there, or, or you can. Or you can yeah. Right here. Um, yeah. So my question was mainly about. Um, Topology handling, and could you like briefly talk about like, what were the problems that you came across? Because for me, I've, I'll just give you a bit of context. Um, quite a big problem uh, at the moment is uh, the I don't know like to which fact it is related to, but whenever I create new tetrahedra, then remove uh, all tetrahedra, everything works fine. But then I have some isolated duffs or isolated vertices. That I want to remove, I use the topology modifier to remove those vertices. And when I remove them, the, the visual model that I use goes to well, goes quite crazy. And the indexing of of that uh, of the triangles in the visual model for some reason they uh, for newly created triangles um, they like tend to go crazy, and, and like you have some really weird artifacts for newly created triangles. So I don't know if you came across, or does that ring the bell for you? Uh, um, uh, we were out looking at uh, this, your uh, component graph scene. Uh, it's hard to uh, to tell you if it's uh, unexpected behavior. Or, um, mm. uh, yeah, to answer the beginning of your question, this was more um, issue as, uh, as I said with. Um, um, really, uh, uh, not strange, but uh, uh, I mean the situation where you have no mesh, starting from no mesh, starting only from points. So it was not yes yeah, specific cases. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. specific, specific cases. In your case, maybe it's more related to the topological mapping if you are creating new surface because you, um, um, I suppose you have a tetrahedral mesh and then you are also you have also a surface mesh with triangles. Uh, no, no, uh, no, I'm just using. Tetra to, uh, uh, and to also it depends which version of SOFA you are using because uh, this is only the last six months, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of change also in the last, in the previous last six months. Previous oh. six months. <laughs> <laughs> now uh, the one that I'm using is twenty one point twelve, so it's so it's not so old. Yeah, it's not no. so old. Mm, yeah, the best thing is to 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 put some issue on uh, on GitHub and we mm. will go through. Oh, oh, I, mean, oh, yeah. I was just wondering if it's the way it is. But normally, no. Right now, with the version of Sofa, uh, I mean, you can remove cut tetrahedra, and you just need to use uh, the correct API, and it's working fine. I mean, mm. <laughs> from the <laughs> point of view. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm using the um, 
the read row set all G modifier. Yes. So the exact order which I follow is uh, in order to basically uh, not remove any any old uh, edges. Mm -hmm. I first add new tetrahedra, then I remove the old ones. Uh, ah. So that maybe th this doesn't seem lo so logical. Let's <laughs> say uh, there was an issue, but it seems a bit similar. Someone like was adding this part works just fine. Okay. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but then I have some isolated uh, vertices that I created earlier just to, well, let's say I have some, uh, since it's um, an arbitrary path cut, mm -hmm. uh, we have some, some tetrahedra that uh, have too many uh, points of, of intersection. Like, for instance, all four edges were intersected. Yeah. Uh, so we cannot really, we don't know how to split it properly between like left and right side of the cut. Okay. So what I do instead, I just say, okay, let's just remove that tetrahedra and say that like what we do with carving. But yes. since I created uh, vertices to split it earlier, which is maybe not an, an optimal way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I have this isolated vertices and I want to, okay, I, I, I check if a vertex is not attached to any of, of the tetrahedra in the, in the mesh. I just removed that. And that's where, where the problem comes in. Yeah, you might have a problem, uh, especially uh, dealing with the, I mean, the FEM and uh, all the mechanical parts behind. Because if you are creating some... <clears throat> the idea in SOFA is when you, you want to add some new vertices in your mesh, and you have already have a, a mesh with a mechanical behavior, the idea is if we new uh, degree of freedom you are creating, they should uh, have some uh, what we call ancestors mm -hmm. to know uh, from which DOF they have to take some, I mean, to integrate the, the behavior using a bicentric, or, uh, using a bicentric uh, coefficient also. Mm -hmm. So if you create some, uh, really some isolated vertices and then you add it suddenly into the mesh, you need to update. Uh, well, they are isolated in the sense that they don't have any uh, topological elements attached to it. Elements, yeah. or, sorry, edges, nor tetrahedra. But I do have ancestors in the, okay. in, in the sense that, let's say we have a, a tetrahedron and we want to split an edge. Uh, so we say, okay, I take uh, point one and point two from that edge that I want to split. I insert the vertex with these ancestors and the bar-centric coefficient of the of the intersection. Mm -hmm. But then I say, okay, I, I actually remove this tetrahedron, so I don't need that vertex. Okay, so I think the best would be to put that. I mean, to to go to do some uh, peer programming and see the the, the case you have, you have, or mm -hmm. to create an issue and we'll go through. Okay. But maybe it's yeah, we don't yeah, yeah. spend too much time here. Anyways, oh, thanks. But yeah, definitely we will uh, solve that issue. Yeah, if you have a mesh with a topological structure, if you remove either a topological element or a um, uh, point, it, sh it, sh it should remove the, everything that is linked to the, this point. So, so I'm getting back to, to the notes here. Is there anything to be added here? So I see uh, an anonymous comment. I guess it's you, uh, you Romain, or I see uh, an anonymous comment who is looking at the, no, oh, no, okay, on the notes. Um, yeah, is there anything you'd like to add, uh, Eric, uh, in the future plan? So topology changes depending on GitHub issues, re release of the plugin for Happy Robotics. So that's a company selling uh, haptic devices. And we definitely uh, like advise either like Apply and, and, and follow if you never like saw the, the haptic devices. Uh, that has been interfaced by Infintech 3D. That's uh, definitely things you, you can have a look at um, uh, on the marketplace. So yeah, we should actually add that on the on the, the Apply Robotic plugin uh, on the on the marketplace as soon as it's uh, it's uh, released, and work to be continued on as we said internal plugins and beam adapter. Yeah. Any, yes. Anything to you know? To add no, it will depends on the <laughs> on, on project. On the project, yes. 
Okay. Is there coupling to other stuff you'd like to talk about? Or ah, or? yeah, if you want. We, uh, do you want to speak about uh, coupling with Unreal Engine yeah, to yeah, Unity? Yeah. Yes, it's planned. It really depends on the time we have. But the idea is to... So this is a, a big teaser. <laughs> the idea is to release the uh, public version of uh, the integration inside Unity and Unreal Engine, but in uh, read-only. So to be able to do some... If you want to do your... Some nice picture or nice rendering, and just the idea would be to to use you do you do your simulation in Sofa as uh, usual, and then you can export it inside uh, one of the game engine. Cool. Thanks a lot. Is there anything no, more to, to be added? Uh, just uh, uh, we need some feedback for the beam adapter. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's the, the, the pull requests are pending. If we or for if yeah if we miss miss something. Okay. So maybe uh, Camille, if you can, you know, pass the uh, just uh, pass the information. Maybe f uh, same as you, Robin, uh, to pass the information at Mimesis, saying that basically Beam Adapter is changing quickly. Many things are, have been changed in the API and also in the scene, uh, the way thing, scenes, sorry, are are written, uh, whether it's uh, XML or Python. Um, and yeah, because I mean, this will remain pending maybe um, up to before the release, but it will be definitely, I think, integrated. Those changes will be integrated within uh, the release 22-12, uh, so the one uh, in December. So yeah, and all the contributions are definitely welcome, and so feedback uh, and contribution welcome on the on the beam adapter. Thanks a lot. We have like 15 minutes left. Is that enough for like one of you guys? Uh, do, do, you think, do you think it, it can fit the 15? Okay, okay. So let's do that. We'll, uh, is that okay with you, Aubin? And we'll take uh, like uh, the lunch break and then we'll start. You'll be the, the uh, so it will be the last roadmap uh, presentation and then we'll talk about the next six months, the future of your, of everyone here in the room, what's going to be, you, you're going to be up to and so on. Um, all right, it's, uh, it's my pleasure to, to welcome uh, uh, our uh, former colleague uh, Fred. So Fred will talk about uh, what uh, what you what you've <laughs> done here. Maybe first, Sofa. Yeah, perfect. Sofa next gen. That was on the on the on the last roadmap. Uh, uh, I'm opening the web page of the of the roadmap, uh, roadmap as well. So on Sofa next gen, it was basically conclu concluding the whole work, merging the last pull request, and most importantly, document documenting and supporting the migration of the community so that uh, this new API, the new, the new basically architecture of SOFA was well like integrated and, and noticed by everyone. So I'll let you, uh, I'll let you do the introduction. We just, uh, yeah, the conclusion, conclusion part for the SOFA NG task uh, we defined now a few years ago. So following up, so it was integrated into the latest uh, releases, release in uh, July. So, of course, we set uh, compatibility layers uh, enabled by default. And just before, I mean, between the last uh, STC and uh, the release, we had to do some quick uh, fix with uh, Guillaume Parent, actually. So since then, the, since the release, we didn't really have, uh, actually, as far as I know, huh, but I didn't really receive a lot of complaints about Sofa NG itself, like uh, I see make a question like why uh, my uh, previous uh, module is not working anymore. So. I'm in touching wood about that, so <laughs> for now it's working, not uh, not that bad. Unfortunately, there is one few bu few bugs uh, still uh, present. I mean, it was fixed in the master uh, version, but not in the release. You know about the, the Sofa GUI uh, CMake files, so we should uh, we should uh, fix that before. I mean, with a new patch, a new patch, or in the new uh, next uh, release, especially because in the GUI it's like the deprecated version of the sofa, but still are not deprecated itself. So we should address uh, this issue uh, soon, actually. The GUI, I mean, the GUI uh, mm -hmm. component, 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 componentization or modularization, we should address that. I mean, I, sh I speak about that uh, just after, maybe in that uh, slide or the next one. But anyway, in my point of view, now I'm working as a real user and not really a consortium. It's much clearer as a component organization in my mind. Huh? So I don't know if you guys you, you agree, but as for me as a user or developer, I mean plugin developer, it's much better than before with the Sofa Mix force field and 
stuff you don't know where. Uh, so what we are doing now, I mean, after the soft, real sofa NG, we are gradually uh, moving everything with the new architecture. I mean, without needing the legacy layer. So I en encourage everybody, I mean, all the plugin developers, not uh, supported by uh, the consortium, to compile their own plugin without the, uh, the compatibility layer. So if you disable the CMake option, uh, so far enable legacy layer. So of course it will break your compilation, but like that it will force you to, to have the new, uh, the new architecture. And what we should do, uh, what you should do, like now it's not really important, but I could see so far Python 3 is still uh, following the previous uh, renaming. Like uh, I saw the binding is called uh, sofa based topology, so we should renaming to sofa topology or something like that. And of course, also it was uh, included into the sofa ng, but it's not really related to the architecture. We still continue to deprecate and remove the old plugins, you know, the uh, application plugin uh, directory. Like still a few not used anymore, not even not usable uh, plugins. So we should continue to do that. But more, more, the most important now for me, I mean, my point of view, is to clarify the, how to use the GUI. I was speaking before with the IM GUI. It's like now I, we should uh, plugin, I say pluginify, uh, for it should be like one DLL, one, uh, one GUI. So if you want to load, uh, if you want to load uh, one GUI, you should load, load a DLL. So it's not really the same, pl it's not a pl sofa plugin like in the component sense, it would be more like a DLL with uh, registering itself in the list of GUI. Because you know? before it was like, you needed to link it with the sofa GUI and you had, uh, according to your compilation, so it was really uh, a bit weird. Uh, so sofa GUI could or not, could not uh, integrate a QTE or QGL viewer or I don't know, the headless recorder or something like that. So now we should do like uh, loadable uh, plugin. So I did uh, one proof of concept on my uh, repository, like everything was uh, pluginified uh, with Qt and uh, and everything. Actually, even IMGY was uh, it's already pluginified. So, but this I guess we should address that uh, issue. I mean, it's not mandatory, but it would much much better to develop new GUI, especially for the IMGY. And we could also remove maybe one day the Qt uh, dependency. Once we don't do, we don't set uh, Qt GUI uh, default uh, on by default. You know? uh, uh, just, just a remark mm. regarding what you wrote on Sofa Python, Sofa Python 3 here. Mm. Sofa Python 3 should be following the. So I, I got two, two remarks. For, mm. First, uh, for instance, Damien, you said that you, you were having like uh, no no real defined workload, but that that could be one topic, one interesting topic, you know, for like making the architecture evolve and follow the one of so far. Uh, and I wanted to add that, you know, regarding uh, following the architecture, I think examples should, uh, the, ex the example folder of SOFA is for the moment not perfectly like uh, symmetric, even sometimes just typos or, or names like mechanical load that has been renamed. So basically the external forces, um, uh, uh, yeah, that uh, external forces that has been some kind of gathered together and named as mechanical load, we should make sure that the associated example folder is actually following the same naming. With that, it would really, really help. I can see that in the training sessions already, that looking at the code is way easier. If we have already this mirroring with the examples, it would be super cool. So this, I actually, actually, I could do it. Uh, I mean, it's uh, nothing uh, fancy here. And definitely, that's why I was saying that also for Damien uh, uh, on the Sofa Python 3 would be cool as well. So I'm switch, switching. So that was just before I'm going to Korea, <laughs> doing my uh, Sofa NG, uh, just before leaving uh, the consortium. So now it's my work with uh, my new company, uh, N Robotics in Korea. So you saw the, a few slides about the simulator, I mean, the cardiac simulator. So you could understand that we want to navigate with catheter into deformable uh, environment. So it would be a, a lot of uh, problem with uh, speeds and, uh, and everything. So my few months I was there, I was really, fo I really focused on uh, uh, increasing performances, actually, and the, the bug, obviously. So I started to work on the, I mean, when I, w I was running the profiler, I could see the constraint resolution was uh, 
taking a lot of time. So it's really, like, well, like I said, uh, billions of time uh, functions are called uh, every at every time step. So I, put, I do I did uh, two few PRs. PRs. So some are already uh, yeah, merged in the sofa, but some are really easy to do, and it was a huge uh, speed up. Like just to put one uh, call function, I mean, uh, a call uh, to put it out of the loop was like a huge uh, enhancement. And the removal of calls for, from uh, to a virtual function in base matrix, you know, uh, instead of using the uh, no, not not base matrix, actually, I did a mistake. A base vector. Uh, instead of you calling the generic API, I was calling the real uh, function. I mean, a full vector, and it was like 20 uh, percent of speed up. So it was like huge, uh, huge improvement. After that, what I this is not I didn't really do a PR because I identified the problem, but I don't know how to do it uh, like for everybody. Because uh, for me, for now, it's uh, for my company, but. I'm just explaining why, what is the problem. Is like the, uh, the browsing of the, all the constraint because it's uh, about the constraint matrix. This type is uh, name is map map sparse matrix. Basically, it's a map of map, you know, a steady map of a steady map. And this is really slow, <laughs> slow and really not op optimized at all. And it's this uh, browsing is did it, uh, did it everywhere. Especially in uh, constraint resolution, but uh, constraint uh, yeah, correction. So the best solution would be to rewrite uh, map, uh, the sparse matrix uh, type. So it should not be a map of map, but something else. But it will imply to modify all so far, really. And I think it would be really complicated to do a compatibility layer on that uh, on that part. M maybe, but I didn't really think about that. But I think it would be quite difficult. So another solution for just the constraint uh, correction. Because it's got a lot of time. I mean, he's doing the same uh, browsing for every time step. Like he's doing ten thousand of times for doing the, the same things. So basically, we're just to cache uh, the browsing into a vector, so like uh, really optimized. And as the first uh, step, by you cache and you iterate, and the next time you just iterate, and it's really a big optimization. I mean, easy optimization, but really uh, useful. So like twenty percent of speed up and more you have constraint, more it will be fast, you know, because it will be faster. So, so in the end, I didn't do a PR. Uh, I can show the branch and everything because it's really ad hoc for my uh, purpose. But if anybody is uh, interested, I can share the sub branch with uh, somebody. Or I can just do a PR and we can have a look. But I don't think we should merge it into the master branch. I don't think it's a good idea. Francois is uh, saying that replacing map map sparse matrix by an efficient compressed sparse mm, matrix format sure. has mm. been done in our our fork with a similar iterator interface to make the change as transparent. Ah, so if if it's already done the <laughs> the compatibility uh, API will be a great idea actually. So yeah, we will have a look at the uh, uh, Insimo uh, repository. So <coughs> yeah. that something. Sorry, I don't know, but I don't see what this Christian saying. But maybe at the end, I will uh, see. The, I will uh, uh, hear the question. This uh, just to implement a little uh, component because it was really uh, needed by a lot of people and even for me actually for with the robot. So it was just to get the force induced by the constraint. So in that case, in, in that video, uh, there is a friction force. So you can see the red, uh, the right white uh, line. Actually, I didn't de did a narrow because I was lazy, but you can see the force in the, uh, uh, built by the constraint. So it's, uh, yeah, oops. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so you can see like I'm just uh, uh, pulling a donut in the, into the cube with a colli collision. And you can see all, it's uh, rigid, and you can see the force uh, uh, induced by the Friction, contra, uh, friction contact constraint. So, yeah. so we just need a linear uh, constraint solver and uh, the mechanical object you want to get the forces. And also, other, other than that, to the sofa itself, I, how do you scale the view of the contact? Uh, Christian is asking, how do you scale uh, scale the visualization of? The uh, just uh, like a data field, uh, like a float, a scale, and that's it, you know. Because yeah, I just. 
You don't know the unit, so. And it, it could, it, I mean, it does not only show the the normal force, right? It could be tangential. Right? Yeah, it could be as well. Yeah. Uh, in that case, I mean, my component just did one direction, but we should we can compute uh, yeah. one direction. Yeah, okay. we can. It's not done, but we okay. can. Yeah. Actually, it's not merged because I still need to do a unit test. Yeah, to like validate because at the end uh, we saw that was some problem, so just need to do a small unit test. So, so that you know, it's some, something which is also of, in, of, of interest from uh, for the for the guys uh, guys at uh, ETH. Uh, okay. You know what they showed the other day? Yeah, but it was uh, yeah, it was it, it, that's okay. Yeah. Kind of, and the, what they were saying is that they could really not really reach the exact force. They were just getting some directions and like adapting the. Yeah. the so getting a component as you are doing, but we know that for sometimes that, that accessing and visualizing the, the, the forces, the Lagrange multipliers, basically it's some, something which is really cool. So yeah, yeah. nice. So in my search to have a more uh, speed, I mean, FPS, I noticed that the rotate uh, function and inverse rotate the same in Quaternion could be uh, slightly optimized. Actually, I took the code from the GLM uh, library, so. I mean, it's uh, safe. And I, with the raw benches, uh, with the SOFA benchmark project from uh, Alex, I could see there is a 25% uh, of speed up. Well, it's because it's calling only that function, so for sure there is a lot of big speed up, but for common project, it's not that uh, big speed up. Other than that, there is a lot of PRs I'm doing, clean, clean ups and physics. Hmm? A lot of them. Yeah, maybe a lot. Yeah. After, uh, yeah, so just a few summary of all the optimization I, I've done. So uh, just before I started to optimize uh, so far uh, for one scene in Bina Adapter, his name is three collision uh, navigation or mm -hmm. something like that, Collies. Uh, yeah, three yeah, collies. collies yeah. yeah, so at the beginning, I was uh, at, uh, for 5,000 iteration, it was uh, 100 uh, seconds, uh, more than 100. With the release, uh, already with uh, some fixes, uh, some optimization in was a 70 uh, second, and now with the master master branch plus the cache, I show the I show the I mean the optimization of my map sparse matrix. Let's say it's now is 50 second, so it's quite a big speed up. Uh, let's say I'm still continuing to to optimize in any way. So uh, after that, I've worked a lot in Beam Adapter with Eric actually. So the feature to have a custom uh, tip a shape for the tip was broken for since I don't know, <laughs> but I guess a long, of, a long time. So we fixed it. So as you can see on the picture, like I just did a, a key and you kind of deploy the key. <laughs> anyway, so you can have your own uh, shape. It's, it's important because usually uh, uh, the surgeon, I mean, the, what the, the name radiologist, uh, I don't know the, their title, but they have a really special uh, shape for the intervention. Jenkins and something like that. So it's really important actually to have a custom uh, shape. Uh, after that, um, being native mapping is really interesting because, well, first I was, uh, I saw that it was quite uh, called a lot of time. At the beginning, I was just uh, multi uh, the apply G function, so a slight speed up, so it was uh, quite okay. But after that, I saw that apply G was called unnecessarily for like uh, visual mapping, I mean, non-mechanical mapping, so one way, like just for the visualization. So just you just need apply, you don't need apply G, apply GT. And I just did a one Boolean and just uh, don't go there if it's, uh, you are visual. And it's huge speed, <laughs> it's really huge speed up. So for, for me, it's a bug, huh? but I don't know if it's only beam adapter, but I don't know. But I don't know why apply G and apply GT was called, so I was thinking maybe it was more a software problem. So this we should uh, investigate about that issue. But anyway, in my uh, my uh, beam adapter, I have a small uh, data, like Boolean data, just really not mechanical mapping, and it's just uh, bypassing apply G, apply GT, and it's really a big speed up. And other than that, of course, uh, being a data, I really needed a lot of uh, cleanups with Eric. So I clean up, we clean up the CMake the API using the SOFA NG architecture. A lot of assertion in the bug. I mean, still, there are still uh, some assertion actually, but removing a lot of, uh, I mean, to make it uh, runnable in uh, debug. After that, we set up a regression, which is really useful to, to be sure that we don't break anything. And also some uh, instantiation for, for CUDA, I mean, the CUDA templates. 
But in the end, it was uh, not useful because there is nothing. Uh, I mean, so Fakuda doesn't really manage uh, and handle uh, rigid efficiently. I mean, even at all. So this part was a bit uh, useless, but I still uh, kept it. And that's it. Thanks a lot. Um, thanks a lot. Uh, I, I, tr I tried to, talk, uh, to take all the notes here. Um, yeah, there was a remark from um, from Francois saying, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, did you notice that? Yeah, yeah, but you just regarding the performances. Uh, yeah, you said just... Uh, oh. Okay. Ah, another one? Another one? Uh, no, re regarding the, you know, the evaluation of performances? Uh, no, I didn't uh, say. Uh, saying that, you know, uh, it's it's always better to take the, like, uh, the worst case, not like uh, make an average of performance, but take like the the worst moment of the simulation, or I guess the worst time step, and to, hmm. to compare. Yeah, but it's worst. easier to like, every yeah. time I do a bench, it's like yeah. a range, uh, G, T -R -A -G, a batch, uh, T -R -A -N, uh, T -R -A, a lot of steps actually, and <laughs> I make it automatic, otherwise it will, uh, will be a bit difficult actually. But yeah, I understood uh, what, you, you mean, what you meant. I'm here, Jeffy. Um, perfect. Uh, all right. So, yeah, the I think we're gonna stop here. It's noon, at least uh, noon CET. Uh, we're gonna make a one hour and a half break so that we restart at one thirty. If it's fine for everyone, we're gonna restart with the last uh, roadmap topic, which is the one from Robin on deep physics and more, because there are gonna be updates about what he's gonna be up to actually after December. Um, differential stuff uh, you should uh, you, sh you should uh, m you might have already heard about so we will get back sa so we'll stay connected here same room 130 so in a one one hour and 30 minutes if there is any question please do not hesitate to use the chat and I saw that there were new people arrived um, Laden who arrived uh, Joao as well if you have any updates on your own work guys do not hesitate to just drop a few comments in the chat or to unmute to unmute yourself in time uh, or just to say hello, definitely, that would be nice. I just want to yeah. add a little bit, because you uh, you didn't put your so Philosophia link into the, in your project, yeah. So uh, I, I, will share in yeah. The, yeah. I will share it in the WebEx uh, chat, So okay. because I, I still I, I'm just uh, looking at it. I'm, uh, it's really interesting, so I want to share with everybody. Uh, and that's, that's actually true for any of the projects, so Philosophia included, but uh, just s send, that, uh, send the links, uh, send me the links again, so that I could also add them on the, on the marketplace. Uh, you know, so that we can have like something that uh, people. A short disclaimer then. Yeah. I don't have a mic, but basically, yeah. philosophy is not well documented at the moment, apart from everything that's in the comments. Yeah. So if but it, it's. If you just do let me know, we'll work on the. Yeah. So for. But the, the idea. Is a really good one. Mm -hmm. I always just had a look and it's a really nice piece of work uh, written. The, the idea would be to, to, to actually just give more visibility to such projects, even they are just starting, or for instance, you know, Apply Robotics plugin to couple Sofa and the Apply uh, Aptic uh, devices. Um, the idea is to, in a sh short amount of time, even if the project is new, even if it's not over, done, and so on, there is actually, in one of the criterion of the marketplace, it's actually, is that still ongoing development? Uh, so yeah, just let me know. We would add it uh, on the marketplace to give uh, 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 to give more visibility on it. Um, so for this afternoon, so 1.30, we're going to restart with a deep physics topic. Then we're going to talk about uh, like try to set up a, a roadmap for the 23.06 uh, release of Sofa in six months. Um, yeah, and that's uh, that's about it. So see you in a, an hour and 30 minutes, guys. Ciao, Arnaud, à toutes.